uh, now move to the condolence motion. The Senate will now proceed to the consideration of a condolence motion relating to the late Senator Alex Gallagher. I call the Leader of the Opposition in the Senate. Thank you, Deputy President. I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of the late Sir Senator Alex Gallagher. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Senator Wong. I thank the Senate. I move that the Senate expresses its sadness at the death on 29 August 2021 of Senator Alexander McCatchian Gallagher, Senator for South Australia, and places on record its gratitude for his service to the parliament and the nation and tenders its deep sympathy to his family in their bereavement. And I can, can I also acknowledge the courtesy extended by the government in having the opposition move this motion and for the adjournment after the conclusion of the condolence. Deputy President, I express the opposition's condolences and our grief following the passing of our colleague and friend, Senator Alex Gallagher. And my thoughts are with Paola and all of Alex's family, his staff and his comrades at the Transport Workers Union. As Leader of the Opposition in the Senate, I have spoken on the passing of a number of former senators and ministers over the last few years from all sides of politics. But it is an acutely sad duty to eulogise a colleague who just a few short months ago sat here amongst us in this chamber. And I know many of my colleagues here miss him dearly. We knew Alex had cancer. He once told us that in response to someone asking him how he was. He replied, how do you think I am? I'm dying of cancer. Yet despite his frankness, it is still hard to confront the reality that he is gone that his determination in the face of adversity was not enough to defeat the disease that ended his life on the 29th of August. And the fact that we knew of his fragile health did not make the news of his passing any easier. Despite his illness, Alex was determined to remain a senator. And even after his diagnosis was announced in January 2020, he continued to work as much as he was able to. Alex joined us and participated in the sittings of the Senate in Canberra as recently of June, as June of this year. And the determination he demonstrated in doing so was a hallmark of the way he conducted himself throughout his life. Alex Gallagher never forgot the workers he was elected to represent. In his first speech, he said, I will strive to be true to the Labor values of a fair go and a better chance for all. It is my belief that the Labor Party is the only party that provides all Australians a greater share of the prosperity of this great nation. And at every opportunity, he brought the Senate's attention to those people who are at the heart of what it means to represent the Australian Labor Party, especially in the transport industry. And Australian workers across this country are better off for his advocacy and his commitment. Born on New Year's Day in 1954, Senator Alex Gallagher's early life was peripatetic. As a child, he went from Scotland to England, back to Scotland, then Wales, and again to England. The youngest of five, his mother died when he was two. He was cared for by his grandmother before his father remarried, and these were not easy years. His stepmother and her two children later left his father. And Alex felt the impact of poverty, insecure work, and inadequate housing. And he channeled those experiences into a life of fighting for those who needed an advocate, those who did not have the capacity to speak up for themselves. In 1966, at the age of 12, he made the long journey to Darwin and he called the Northern Territory home for the best part of the next 30 years before his final migration south to Adelaide in 2011. And it was in Darwin that Alex began another journey from transport worker to union official and one that would eventually take him to the Senate. It was there that his two children, Caroline and Ian, were born. In time, they were joined by Terry and Frank and he married Paola in 2011. Family was always very important to Alex and he to them. Later in life, he was delighted as his family grew with the addition of grandchildren and he delighted in their company when they joined him on the golf course. It was very moving at the wake after the funeral to see his grandchildren speaking of him. Alex Gallagher worked in the transport and aviation industries before coming an official of the Transport Workers Union and serving as Secretary of the South Australian and Northern Territory branch as well as Vice President and President of the National Branch of that union. 
He brought to the union the direct experience of being a truck driver and an aviation ramp operator. His influence and impact runs deep in the union and is illustrated by the tributes paid to his efforts over decades. He was described as straight-talking, no-nonsense and hard-working, a reliable advocate for workers in the transport industry who wanted the best for working people. He wanted to lift standards in the transport industry, understanding as he did that safety in the workplace and the recognition of dangers inherent in many jobs, many of the jobs in that sector was critical to improving the lives and prospects of those workers. Whilst he was always happy to be clear about which side of the debate he was on, Alex was also a strategic thinker and he was someone who could build relationships and see the other, other's perspective too, even if it was one with which he disagreed. He helped to build the union, ensuring it was strong and on a secure financial base. A vital legacy through a time of considerable industrial change in the 1990s and 2000s. It is a fitting tribute that his name will live on through the Alex Gallagher Training Centre at the union's offices in Adelaide. And it is a good thing that the facility was named before he passed, so he could appreciate being recognised in this way by his comrades. After some initial, reservation, ref, initial reservations, which probably reflected uh, so his humility, it was a source of immense pride to him. After more than two decades of service to the union, Alex was elected to represent our state of South Australia in the Senate in 2010, taking his seat on the 1st of July 2011, subsequently re-elected in 2016 and 2019. And whilst he may have left employment with the union, he used this platform to amplify the issues on which he had been cam campaigning on throughout his life in the labour movement. He campaigned on superannuation and road safety in particular. Alex was the founder of the Parliamentary Friends of Road Safety and he served also as the Deputy Chair of the Joint Select Committee on Road Safety. In this work, he and his colleague Glenn Still put the safety of the people he represented for so many decades at the forefront of their political campaigning. And there is no doubt that this work saved lives. He served on a number of other committees, including as chair of the Senate Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade and Economic References Committees. And in these roles, he demonstrated forensic skills that ensured ministers and bureaucrats couldn't slip anything past him. And always, Senator Alice Gallagher stood up for those who needed someone to be their voice in this place, from those affected by road trauma to people with disability to veterans. He stood up for his state he stood up for South Australian workers, including in the manufacturing and defence industries. Alex was also not afraid to, afraid to take policy stances, such as those in support of the nuclear industry and oil and gas exploration in the Great Australian Bight, that were at odds with others in his own party. In fact, Alex and I were often on different sides on an issue. But he was forthright, and he was also honest and upfront, and he was as, as tough in negotiating a policy issue as he was in his battle with cancer, and in both he was equally dignified. I remember a few personal conversations with Alex towards the end, and I remember the cracks of vulnerability appearing in his normally stoic presentation, and the rarity of them made them all the more moving. I hope he knew then that the contribution he would leave is lasting, and just as lasting is the affection of those who cared for him. Indeed, one of the most enduring friendships I've witnessed in my time here is that which Alex there shared with Senator Glenn Stirl. It's a friendship between two mates that lasted a quarter of a century from their days as union officials together. And it's a measure of the strength of this relationship that Senator Stirl was invited by the family to deliver a eulogy at Alex's funeral and was entrusted with the responsibility of speaking about Alex's early life as well as his union and parliamentary career. Alex and Glenn lived with each other here in Canberra for nearly a decade, where they enjoyed Fiona's Sunday night dinners, as Senator Stoll says, as family. They travelled together often for parliamentary work, both within Australia and on occasion overseas. In his tribute, Senator Stoll spoke of his friend who had a rough exterior, 
but was generous, welcoming, and had one of the sharpest minds in the parliament, a champion of common sense and fairness. So, Sterley, our thoughts continue to be with you and Fiona at this time. One thing amongst many that Alex and Glenn share is they never forgot where they came from. Alex channeled the values forged in a difficult upbringing into his relentless support for the underdog. Woe betide any boss he found under undermining the rights of his workers. But beneath that formidable exterior beat a loyal heart. And while this guided his work, it also radiated in his life, in his friendships in his, this place, his comradeship with those in the labour movement, and most especially his love for his family. He brought <clears throat> a positive attitude even as he dealt with the challenge of cancer, maintaining his determination all the way. Senator Gallagher was a Labor champion and he deserves to be remembered as someone who never relented in his pursuit of a fair go for others. As Anthony Albanese said, we in Labor are very proud of Alex. So we mourn the loss of our colleague and I close by again extending my sympathies to his family, his beloved wife, Paola, his children and his grandchildren, and his friends and my colleagues in their grief. Senator Birmingham. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, today we pause uh, to reflect upon and remember the life of a colleague for each of us, a friend across this chamber, and a Labor man truly reflective of the great old-style tradition of Labor Party advocates. Alex Gallagher, in August this year, the former senator for South Australia tragically lost his hard-fought battle with cancer. Alex was a Senate colleague and fellow South Australian senator in this place for over 10 years. We remember Alex as a straight shooter, a man with whom you knew where you stood, what he believed and what he was here to do. He was here to advocate for and improve the lives of working people. And that is what he fought to do right to the very end. Senator, Alec Senator Gallagher delivered his first speech to this place in 2011. In his remarks, he committed to be true to the Labor values of a fair go and a better chance for all, to repay the faith put in him by the Labor voters of South Australia, by his party and his colleagues, to deliver a greater share of the prosperity of this great nation to all Australians, especially hardworking Australians. In the 10 years that followed, Alex remained loyal to his word and strived to be true to his Labor values. In his final speech to this place, Alex was still continuing exactly as he had started, advocating for the workers of this country to get a better share, as he saw it, of the national income. While we take this opportunity now to reflect on his life and the significant contributions he made to this nation, we lament the loss of a good man and a strong voice for Australian workers. Upon election to the Senate, Alex immediately got to work on championing three key policy interests, the transport industry, road safety and superannuation. The root for his passion for these causes came from his journey that led him all the way to serve in this our nation's parliament. The son of Scottish migrants, Alex Gallagher was born in the coal mining village of New Comic, Scotland in 1954. Whilst he may have been born a Scot and remained proud of his heritage, Alex made Australia home and in every aspect the key part and home for his life. As Senator Wong has said, at age 12, he made the move across Australia. Like so many migrants, his family sought a better chance for him and his family, and in their case, they moved to the Northern Territory. It was here that Alex would undertake his schooling at Darwin High School. In 1971, he started work as a labourer and truck driver before commencing work as an airline ramp services operator from 1976 through to 1988. Alex, through his roll the sleeves up work, was truly proud of his old school labour mould, having been a traditional blue collar working class man. 
his background proudly added to the diversity of this place. It was in 1988 that he made what would be a defining step in his journey, ultimately leading to the Senate, by joining the Northern Territory branch of the Australian Labor Party, and then, later in 1994, the South Australian branch. For 22 years, he worked in several roles for the Transport Workers' Union in the Northern Territory and South Australia, taking on an initial role as Industrial Relations Officer. He would later move into various leadership roles within the TWU, culminating in his rise to President from 2007 until 2010, when he was first elected to the Senate. Alex also served as a Commissioner for the National Road Transport Commission and as a Director of the South Australian Motor Accident Commission. He took his love for the transport sector and brought it into this place, particularly his staunch advocacy for road safety and his pointed interest in the rights of workers in the aviation industry. As a fellow South Australian, I also fondly remember Alex for his genuine interest in rural and remote South Australia. He undertook important work with great passion and care on the Senate Standing Committee on Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport. As the member for Grey put it in the other place, Wheels on the road is what keeps our remote communities going, and few understood that better than Alex Gallagher. He dedicated a significant amount of work to parliamentary committees, serving on 23 different committees during his time in the Australian Parliament. Despite his cancer diagnosis in December 2019, Alex continued to represent the people of South Australia, the Labor Party, the trade, movement, trade union movement and his constituents with diligence and passion. Notwithstanding his battle with cancer, Alex focused his parliamentary service on those he served, not himself, earning great admiration and respect right across the political divide. He was, as Senator Wong has acknowledged at heart, a true family man, a quality I and I'm sure all admired in him. It was his family from whom he sought advice and stability. More than that, Alex credited his wife Paola with ensuring the important things in life, family, children and grandchildren, were always front and centre. Paola was, as Alex endearingly described her, his tower of strength. In his own words, she made him a better person by holding up the values of humility and respect for others that Alex rightly considered necessary for making an effective contribution to this place. To conclude some of my remarks, on Alex's service, I want to borrow the same Theodore Roosevelt quotation that Alex concluded in his first address to this place. Far and away, the best prize life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Alex carried the spirit of this quotation throughout his life. He embodied it in his work ethic, especially his work in this place and his commitment and dedication to those he sought to serve. For that, we thank him for his service and acknowledge the significant contribution that he made and differences that he made. To those who believe that politics is a friendless profession, Alex proved the opposite. No doubt his SA party comrade, Don Farrell, and perhaps more so, more particularly, in a special way, as Senator Wong has acknowledged, his fellow former TWU leader, Glenn Stirl, were always obviously great mates. Alex and Stirlo moved almost as one, it seemed at times, backing each other in to pack an even bigger punch in the views that they expressed and the issues they fought for. To Stirlo, those on this side of the chamber acknowledge the particular loss uh, that you feel of your great mate. But Alex made friends and earned respect across unions, across factions and across parties because of his roll the sleeves up and get the job done type of attitude. To Paola and to Alex's four children, Caroline, Ian, Terry and Frank, to his grandchildren, all of whom meant so much to him, I extend our sincerest condolences on behalf of the Australian Government uh, and no doubt on behalf of all senators. I thank the Senate. Senator Waters.
Thank you very much, President. And I rise to associate the Australian Greens with the remarks that have been made by Senator Wong and Senator Birmingham. Um, former Senator Alex Gallagher came into the Senate at the same time as I did. Um, and I regret that in that time, I did not get to know him better. But what did always strike me about Alex was that whilst he was a man of few words, he was a man of strong convictions, of determination and of quiet passion. In his first speech, he said that all Australians want a better environment and a greater opportunity for those who come after them. And he worked towards that goal during his time in this place. He did that uh, in his work tirelessly on many committees of which voice has already been given. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, he was an employee of transport companies, both as a truck driver and a ramp operator for Trans Australia Airlines. And he, of course, joined the TWU and climbed through their ranks in the 1990s and uh, 2000s and became TWU secretary in 2007 until his appointment in the Senate in 2011. His passion for workers' rights and for workers' safety was clear and he continued to advocate for reforms that would tilt the balance away from freight owners and back towards workers. He wanted be better regulation for workers' safety. <coughs> With all the challenges that COVID has imposed on logistics and transport, his advocacy in this crucial time will be sorely missed. Along with the difficulties that COVID has presented, remote parliament has provided some welcome flexibility. It allowed Senator, Senator Gallagher to participate during his treatment and stay connected to the work that he so dearly loved. Remote Parliament also offered an insight into people's interests and passions through what they display in their office, and Senator Gallagher became internet famous when he participated from his home office in his garage. It was an insight into a full life, a home office busting at the seams with equipment, art pieces, photographs and cars. It showed a love of art, sport, travel and family. While his life was cut short, it was clear that it was a rich life, well lived. I'd like to pay my particular condolences to Senator Stirl for the loss of his dear friend, and we send our heartfelt condolences to all of his family, his friends, his staff, uh, and his Labor colleagues, and everyone in this chamber that knew him. Thank you. Senator McKenzie. Uh, you, On behalf of the National Party, I'd like to associate us um, with the comments around the chamber. Um, like Senator Waters, I started uh, with uh, Senate, former Senator Gallagher here um, back in 2011 and uh, served with him on the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Committee, of which he was a long-standing and strong contributor, along with the, obviously the Deputy Chair, as we colloquially like to call him, Sterlo. Um, but his presence here was very, very influential. He knew what he stood for and that was the old uh, school labour mould. He was determined to make a difference for the working class men and women here uh, in Australia. His grit and determination to make a positive change for transport workers and truck drivers across the nation was limitless. He fought for the rights of hardworking Australians. Um, after 22 years of advocating across different unions, his desire to make a difference ended um, him up here in the Senate. He pushed for improvement in road safety to protect the truck drivers that connected Australians right across this nation. And his experience in the industry allowed him to push for the voice of those who are often silenced. The life of a truck driver can be tough, long hours, isolated and separated from loved ones. It's a job that not many of us can truly understand, but Alex did, and he spoke to what mattered to them most. And he never lost that determination to improve their lives. Uh, he was Deputy Chair of the Joint Select Committee on Road Safety and also an outspoken member of the Public Works Committee, which saw him overseas a lot of infrastructure projects uh, that also uh, contributed to positive outcomes for um, those in the trucking industry. His passion and endorsement for a fair go and a better chance for all went beyond the truck drivers. He fought for what he believed was the best interests of all South Australians, um, and so we often clashed on water. He was driven by the vision of all Australians of having access to fair and secure jobs, and this included um, equitable pay and working conditions. He did stand against the crowd, and I think Senator Wong mentioned that it didn't matter which crowd you were in. If you are in the Liberal Party, the <laughs> National Party, definitely wasn't a fan of the Greens, 
uh, and sometimes not a great fan of uh, some of the Labor Party policies. But that is a man of conviction and integrity and uh, rare, too often too rare um, in this line of work these days. He also understood the importance of connecting Australians to the regions. In his first speech, uh, he said, and uh, this quote has already been used today, but I, he firmly believes that all Australians want a better environment and a greater opportunity for those who come after them, and I'll endeavour to fulfil that obligation in my role here in the Senate. And I absolutely believe Alex did that. He'll always be admired by all as a hard-working straight shooter who had the best interests of all at heart. Um, my former colleague, uh, Senator John Wacker-Williams, recalls him as a good bloke with a kind nature, always up for a laugh, particularly when he teamed up with his good friend Glenn Stirl and caused a bit of havoc on some of those um, road trips that the RAC committee was wont to do. And just briefly um, on his relationship with Senator Stirl, it didn't matter whether sharing a wine or a walk, those two were absolutely inseparable, like the two um, on some of those late night debates in this chamber that we used to have um, when we made ourselves stay here till the wee hours, they'd be like those two old guys on the Muppets commentating, particularly on Nick Xenophon at times. Um, Wacker also remembers his time working with Senator Gallagher and praised his dedication for improving safety within the trucking industry. A husband, brother, father, grandfather and advocate, Alex was respected and loved and admired by all those that knew him. We thank him for his 10 years uh, as service in this place and our sympathies are with his family and friends. Now we'll go to Senator Stirl remotely. Senator Stirl, you have the call. Well, President Brockman, thank you very much and congratulations on your ascension to the highest office in the land on our side of the chamber and I congratulate you. And I want to thank all the previous speakers, my Senate colleagues, for your kind words and never truer words spoken. And it is Senator Mackenzie. Often we were referred to as Stadler and Waldorf, the Senate, to which we thought that was quite funny because even we thought we looked like Stadler and Waldorf. But I want to take the opportunity to thank over 80 individuals who contacted me on that terrible day in August the 29th when we lost Alex and the subsequent day after when the news broke who sent their best wishes to me. And I thank you very much for that. Alex and I, as you know, go back many, many years. We first met in the early... 90s, Alex was a rash, older official of the South Australian Northern Territory branch of the transport workers. I was the younger brash official of the West Australian branch of the Transport Workers Union. And we were summoned to, I think it was a, an ACTU get together love in in Wagga Wagga. And I still don't remember to this day what it was actually about, it was that long ago. But on the way over, the West Australians had had a difference of opinion in the car on the way up. And we thought we might have disgraced our branch if the news broke out to the disagreement. There was the old black eye and someone had a scratch on their cheek. And anyway, the rest is history. It was the 90s and it was the Transport Workers Union. But all was forgiven when we got to Wagga Wagga on the Friday night prior to the start of the conference, because we'd found out that some brash young South Australian Northern Territory organiser had knocked out the secretary of the branch and taken over the rain. So Alex, I always thanked him for that. He took the pressure off us and that was the sort of bloke that Alex was. He was a no nonsense, no muck around, straight to the point guy. I don't condone that behavior nowadays, but it was nearly 30 years ago. Thankfully, things have changed. As you all know, and you have heard, Alex lived with Fiona and I in Canberra for the last 10 years. And I'm always, to this day, and to this day, I'm going to miss Alex's nightly lectures from what I should be doing because my health choices and my dietary choices were wrong, even though after a few he'd be exactly the same as me, after a few quiet wines or a few quiet beers. And as Senator Wong had said, Sunday night was family night when we had some normality in our life, when Fiona and I would come across from Perth and we would go up the stairs to our unit. Sure enough, as you know, Senator Wong, the South Australian flight gets in before the Perth flight. The light was on and I'd say to Fiona, oh, well, Mr. Happy's here, beauty, bottom dollar, open the door, middle of winter, and he'll have all the windows open, sure enough. But we'd had so many good nights, so many good times. Alex and I shared many, many uh, common interests, apart from our love of the Transport Workers Union, apart from our commitment to the Australian Labor Party but, and their values, but also Alex, like myself, has the strongest love of family 
And so Alex's family was everything. Alex always spoke lovingly and endearing of Paola, who we used to refer to as the boss, and we knew who we met. But also, as much as Paola had the same amount of energy and love was always centred around Caroline and Ian, and of course his extended family of Frank and Terry, and never ever did Alex miss an opportunity to talk about uh, Lockie and Connor up in Darwin and Mia down in Adelaide. And also Alex's other loves that him and I both shared together, because we were inseparable, was our love of golf, our love of a quiet beer or a cider or a wine together, and with anyone else who cared to join us, but also to have the odd 50 cents each way on the odd nag every Saturday at every opportunity. So Alex and I would sometimes combine that passion and we'd stay over in Canberra. Alex always kept his car over here. And after our sittings, Alex and I would pack up and bolt off to play golf. And many, many, many times, or every time we played, everything had to be Alex wanted a dollar on it or a hundred dollars on it. Or if I was lucky enough, I'd get away with 10 each way. And we'd bet on golf, we'd bet on anything. So one day I had the opportunity, Alex and I were having a weekend game of golf. And it sits proudly in my games room on my bar in Perth, at my home. There is a golf scorecard and there's a $10 note and there is a golf ball. And Alex wanted 100 on the front nine, 100 on the back nine and 100 overall. And I said, Alex, knock it off. I said, I'll go you 10 on the front, 10 on the back and 10 overall. Cut long story short, the only way I could win on the last hole was a par three, was Alex had to wipe the hole we were playing Stapleford and I had to get a hole in one. I'm happy to say I got the hole in one and he wiped and he never, ever forgave me. He wanted that $10 back. So Alex, I thank you for that, mate. But I also want to talk about Alex Gallagher, my mate. And Alex was an absolute, as we've heard before, and heard previously and we'll continue to hear, champion of the underdog, champion of working men and women, champion of those who didn't have a voice. Alex never saw black or white or, or left or right. Alex was there. If you needed a mate and you needed someone solid and he was on your side, you knew you couldn't wish for a better mate in your corner. Or not at your back, but at your shoulder. Many, many times Alex and I had locked in on conversations and positions that we may have argued them, we may have had disagreements, but with Alex, and this goes for everyone, you had the opportunity to work your way through it, put your case to him, and if your case proved to be the one that he could accept, he would back you in all the way. Nothing changed with Alex. It came to the point where in late 2019, and it's a well-known fact that I like to shoot off to Bali and play golf with my mates around the Christmas break. And I was planning a usual January trip to Bali and I'd, Alex had come across the year before with Paola and the family and he joined me for a couple of games of golf with my mates. And I'd said to Alex in nine, late 19, come and join us, mate, come us in Bali. At the time, Alex and Paola were building their beautiful new home and he said, oh, look, I've got to stay home, I've got to, you know, get the house built. And I said, oh, all right, mate, no worries. And unbeknownst to me, Fiona and the kids had surprised me with a special 60th birthday present when they were coming to Bali. And that's say that shock horror, it was fantastic. They came over and they stayed for five days. We had a great time, then they left. And my mates were coming so we could spend 10, plays, 10, 10 days playing golf. Fiona and I, my son Daniel, were sitting in a beachside bar on this beautiful sunny day in Bali one, one day in the first week and the phone rang and it was Alex and I missed him. So I rang him straight back and, and missed him. This was uh, probably the first week of January. And um, I said to Fiona, oh, that's Alex. So I'll give him a call back. And I missed him and I, 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 I left a quick message saying, Alex buzzed me back. And I sort of thought, oh, you beauty, Alex has changed his mind. He's going to come up and play some golf with us. And then Alex rang me straight back. This all happened in about three or four minutes. And I'd said to him, hey, Alex, Barley, Bagus, get your backside up here, mate. And to which he said to me, Glenn, I've got cancer. Well, my world dropped. My heart dropped. Fiona and I were just absolutely stunned. And I said to him, mate, how, how is it? And Alex being Alex, oh, yeah, you know, just... Uh, Oh, it's up to the doctors now. And I said, Alex, how is it, mate? 
He said, oh, shit, no, she'll be right. And I stewed overnight and I didn't sleep. I hardly slept. I said, you found the next day. So I've got to ring Alex back. I haven't got the answers. I've got to ring him back. I rang him back and said, Alex. He said, I'm at Bunnings. I said, oh, that's great. I said, but how is it? He said, it's not good. And to that day, I think now, every opportunity you get to spend time with loved ones or friends, grab it. Grab it with two hands because you don't realise how quick it can go. And I looked up to Alex. I looked up to him, even when he was lecturing me, even when he was telling me I needed to go tell Albo, or I needed to go tell Penny that this is not right, and I needed to back him. you, you got to love the man. And by God, I miss him. I absolutely do miss him. We've been through thick and thin together. And as you say, his passion for the road safety, for road safety in this nation, his passion for industry superannuation, it is unquestionable. Nobody could hold a candle to Alex when you were arguing about it or discussing road safety or superannuation or workers' rights. And you could try. Good luck. And I suppose that's why our friendship lasted so long, mainly because we agreed on everything. And I always think back to that brash young South Australian organiser and the brash young West Australian one and probably thought I didn't fancy a bop on the nose either if it got that bad. Not that he ever would. He was a great mate. But I want to share a couple of stories and a couple of quick ones, and I won't take all that long. And I do apologise to my colleagues on the Labor side because Alex and I were the ones with a long with former Senator Gavin Marshall. After Hoggy left the place, we had to do the barbecues. And uh, we used to, you know, put the apron on and our shorts and thongs and off we go and barbie. And the libs could laugh as much as they like because they were doing the same on the other side in their shorts and thongs. But Fiona was always very clear to pass on the word from the whips. Do not mix up the meat with the vegetarian or the vegan stuff to which I won't use the same language, to which Senator Gallagher said to me, what is the difference? And I said, Alex, I don't know, but you can't mix them up. Alex said to me then, if I don't eat meat twice a day, I think I'm turning vegetarian. So to my colleagues, I did my best, trust me, but even I got them mixed up after a while because I don't know what Alex had got up to. Anyway, no one's uh, no one suffered any uh, injury or loss, so you got away with that one. <laughs> I want to share another one that I uh, quickly, before I want to read some words from some other people. And now Senator Wong had said, Alex and I had the privilege of travelling together a lot in the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Committee, alongside with you, Senator Brockman, a long-time member of our great committee, and got to share a lot of fun times and, 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 and meet a lot of good people. But uh, Alex and I had the opportunity to be in Geneva together on a couple of occasions. And Geneva had said that he wanted to buy the kids something to take them back from Geneva. And he worked out something for Lockie and he worked out something for Connor. And I said, mate, uh, I said, what are you going to get for Mia? And he said, I've got no idea. I said, look around, mate. I said, what are we surrounded by? He said, mountains. I said, yeah, well, apart from mountains, what are we surrounded by? Clocks. I said, well, the little girl wouldn't love a cuckoo clock. He said, right, we're going to go get a cuckoo clock. We jumped on the tram. We went and got a cuckoo clock. I tagged along just to make the pair look even more brighter. And cut a long story short, he bought this cuckoo clock, he set it up, and Mia had her own room at Alex and Fowler's place. And I used to stay in the spare room every time we were in Adelaide doing hearings. And i got to tell you, I wish to God, I wish to heck I had never opened my big mouth. Because on every hour, on the hour, sleeping in the spare room, I choked that wooden chook, that wooden cuckoo, because it kept going off. On that, there are many, many stories about Alex, and I'll carry them to my, to my grave. I'm going to miss you, mate. I'm really going to miss you. But I want to take the opportunity with the Senate's indulgence just to read some words that other people wrote about Alex and wanted me to pass on. And I'm going to read the first one from Matthew Marozzi. And those of us on the Labor side all know who Matthew is. And Matthew said that when I first started working for Alex, I thought my journey with him would only be a short one. It was a shock to my system. It took around six months for Alex to warm to me. And I'm thankful for that first road trip into the Air Peninsula where he got to know me personally and the reason why I'm in the Labor Party. It was an understanding of shared values and knowing he could trust me. We then formed a strong working relationship due to many long parliamentary sitting nights, travel for committees, travel in regional South Australia and our passion for fighting for working Australians. The bond became more than just professional and we became friends. I was probably one of his most trusted confidants, and he was mine too. I lost my father at the age of 18 to the same cancer that took Alex, and in that time, Alex truly became a father figure to me. Alex and Paola were like an additional family to me, something I will cherish forever. 
In fact, our office became family too. We were all long-term staffers loyal to Alex, and he was loyal to us. Knowing that our office of Alex, Peter, Susie, Brendan, Pauline and myself will never be together again also deeply saddens me. I will forever remember and cherish the warm moments with Alex because you received these moments. I'm sorry, because with Alex, you received these moments. You truly knew that you were in his inner circle. I'm forever grateful for the 10 years we had, and I'll forever remember those days as the good old days, which I know will never be uh, uh, replicated. He always had my best interests at heart, and it wasn't just about work, but life as well. I will be forever indebted for his constant life advice, which well and truly showed he had my best interest at heart. I miss my boss dearly, but I also miss my friend, ally, mentor and father figure. The impact he had on me will live with me for the rest of my life, and I'm proud to have been his loyal staffer and friend. I will miss him. Rest in peace, Alex, and we'll meet again. And President, just in closing, one more uh, set of words I'd like to re read from a very, very dear friend of Alex and, and, and a person I consider a friend too. And his name is Peter Garsky. And Peter writes, the passing of Alex Gallagher, South Australian ALP Senator, age 67, has left both myself and my wife, Anne, with a deep sadness. Our friendship over 27 years was built on our understanding of his many qualities. Family was always a prior, priority from which all of life's activities flowed. Alex was a lifelong achiever, but always open to new learnings. He had a great vision and could see things anew or differently to others. When he was elected to the Senate in 2010, nothing changed in Alex. His transition on, in his life was another opportunity to support and assist those in the community with the greatest need. He had an exceptional mind for quality, uh, quickly grasping new concepts. Those who knew him well knew he was the smartest man in the room. And may I add also, Alex thought he was the smartest man in the room too, and so did we at most of the times. He had an exceptionally strong social justice ethic, but always was a pragmatic, uh, with a pragmatic outlook. He was unafraid to call out his own colleagues, and believe me, colleagues, I've been on the receiving end more than you have. Alex never looked to impress anyone. He was his own man with a strong sense of loyalty. He was a great judge of character. Highlights of his life included his contribution to family, to the road freight trucking industry, to industrial relations, to industry superannuation funds, and to the Australian Senate. He had a passion for golf. Condolences to his wife, Paola, his four adult children, his wider Scottish and Italian families, and his many friends. He will be missed. And thank you very much, Peter. And to the Senate, rest in peace, mate. Thank you, you Senator, Senator Rustin. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, well, many go through this place and they are remembered for a myriad of reasons. They may well have risen to high office as ministers or, or leaders of parties. They may have courted controversy or they may well have got into trouble. They may well have bestowed their views on Sky After Dark or the ABC. But that wasn't Alex. Alex made his mark and will be remembered here for two reasons. One, because he was a damn good bloke. Uh, and the other one is that no matter how long he was here, he never stopped fighting for the people that sent him here and the people that he believed in, uh, that is, the working, hard-working um, Australians. Um, Alex also never really played politics. Um, he made sure that everything that he did in this place was about playing the issue. Uh, and my respect for Alex and the way he went about his, play, his, his job here, I, I can only say I have the utmost respect for him and the way he conducted himself. Um, you know, like Senator Mackenzie, I have very fond memories of my first committee that, uh, that I sat on, being the Rural and Regional um, uh, Affairs Committee, uh, where Alex and, and you, Sterlo, were, were both on that committee. And we worked closely together, and I think when we worked together on that committee, you could have been excused for thinking that there was no politics and sides of politics, because everybody on that committee just wanted to get the right outcome for rural and regional Australia. And I'll acknowledge the fact that, that both uh, Senator Stirl and Senator Gallagher were people who really understand rural and regional Australia. Um, yeah, it's funny that you should have raised the, the term um, Stadler and Waldorf. I've of, often thought of the pair of you as that. A couple of cantankerous old fellas that used to sit on the other side of the chamber, giving us great cause for mirth on this side of the chamber, because you were giving your own side as much grief as you were giving us um, great pleasure in, in watching that all go down. But, um, 
to you, Senator Stirl, um, you know, a couple of peas in the pod, um, you and, and Alex. Old school mode, uh, old school mould, and you know the fact that you really you, know, you, you loved a game of golf, you loved a punt, you loved a glass of wine. I mean, hilariously though, um, for all the, the love of, of golf that uh, that Alex had, I, I still remember it to to the the last time I saw him on the golf course. He wasn't much of a golfer, but by God, he enjoyed giving it a, a red hot go. Um, at the last election, I, I can remember Alex had decided that he wanted to have a bet with me, and he said to me, Rusty which is what he called me. I don't think I was ever called Senator Anne or anything like that. I was always rusty. I uh, said, mate, what about a bet on who gets elected first? And I said, OK, you're on. I'll be ple you'll be pleased to say that the bottle of red wine that he gave me after he lost that bet was uh, consumed with great pleasure, a great South Australian uh, red wine. And uh, you know, he, was, uh, he was somebody who supported his own community hugely, including making sure that he consumed as much South Australian great red wine as he was possibly able to, which is... Um, uh, something that I'm sure that all South Australians in this chamber would aspire to. Um, I sadly was not able to make Alex's funeral um, because of the quarantine arrangements that existed at the time. I would have loved to have been able to be there because, to me, Alex wasn't a member of the Labor Party. To me, Alex was a friend. Um, I didn't see him as a political rival. I saw him as a friend. Um, and so I'm delighted today to be able to put my condolences on the record um, to Paula and, and to um, Alex's children, Carol and Ian, Terry and Frank and all of his grandchildren. Um, I wish to extend my condolences. Um, it's a great loss for this place. Um, it is a great loss for South Australia. Um, and obviously it is a terrible, terrible loss to Alex and his family. But please remember, that Alex was one of the great people that has gone through this place. He will be remembered because he made a difference. He will be remembered because he's a good bloke. Senator Farrell. Thank you, uh, Mr President. Uh, I rise to speak uh, on this condolence motion of uh, former South Australian uh, Senator Alec uh, Gallagher. I'd like to uh, begin by expressing my sympathy and condolences to Alec's family. In particular, I offer um, my sympathies to Alec's uh, wife, Paola, his daughter Caroline, his son Ian and stepsons Terry and uh, Frank. My condolences also go to his uh, daughter-in-law, uh, Sianed, um, grandsons Connor, Lachlan, um, Jerry and uh, his granddaughter uh, Mia. Uh, Alex uh, sadly passed away earlier this year after a long battle uh, with uh, lung cancer and I know he is greatly missed by his family and friends. <coughs> Uh, and he'll certainly be missed uh, in this place for all of the reasons that the previous uh, speakers have uh, mentioned. Uh, Alex was born uh, on the 1st of January 1954 in, uh, in uh, Scotland. He was a uh, New Year's Day baby. Uh, Alex's family moved to Australia in 1966, and after leaving school, he worked as a labourer and uh, truck driver. He ended up getting a job as uh, ramp service operators with uh, TAA, <coughs> as it was known then and uh, Alex uh, joined the Transport Workers' Union in 1975. That was the start of many years of passionate and dedicated service fighting for the rights and conditions of transport workers in Australia, which um, Senator Stirl uh, very humorously uh, uh, went through some of those uh, particular occasions uh, of his work uh, during that time. Alex held the positions of industrial officer, organiser and state secretary in the uh, <coughs> TW's uh, South Australian and Northern Territory branch. And later he served as the uh, Federal Vice President and, uh, and President. I joined the uh, Shop Distributive uh, and Allied Employees Association in 1960, uh, 1976, uh, not that long ago, <coughs> uh, uh, the year after Alex joined the Transport Workers Union. So we shared many years working uh, in and leading the two strongest unions in South Australia and we developed strong ties and a close working relationship between our unions. Those close ties delivered better pay and conditions for retail and transport workers union members in, uh, in South Australia. Uh, they also helped to deliver 31 years of stable, centrist uh, Labor state governments in South Australia between 1975 and, and uh, 2018. And it was a great privilege working closely with Alex in the Labor movement in South Australia and the Labor Party uh, for many years. Uh, and I know our state will be better off for his efforts. 
In 1988, Alex uh, joined the, uh, the Labor Party, uh, and he joined the right faction of the Labor Party. That's right as in right and right as correct. Um, after we helped him win an election uh, for the position of State Secretary, my very good friend David Feeney, a former senator in this place, uh, came over from Melbourne to run the campaign, and it was one of those great, great uh, union election campaigns. Uh, he served as a delegate <coughs> at both State Council and uh, ALP National Conference, and he won pre-selection for the Senate uh, spot uh, on Labor's uh, South Australian Senate ticket prior to the uh, 2010 federal election. He replaced uh, his very good friend, um, Annette uh, Hurley, uh, and her, um, <coughs> he was very close to her husband, uh, Bob, and uh, Bob used to do all the, um, all the technical work for the, um, all the computer work for the uh, Transport Workers' Union in, uh, in South Australia. He was elected uh, to an initial term beginning on the 1st of July 2011 and re-elected in uh, 2016 and 2019 federal elections. Throughout his working life, Alex remained committed to advocating for a safer workplace with better conditions and fair pay for those working in the Australian transport industry. In his maiden speech, Alex listed transport, road safety and superannuation as his uh, three pro priority interests. And he pursued those uh, issues throughout his time in the parliament, uh, which I'll talk about more later. In that first speech, Alex also raised his concerns over the impact of the carbon tax on road transport and called for uh, self-employed uh, drivers to be compensated for any negative impacts. He later warned against the AL becoming, ALP becoming a captive to the new green agenda. The need to find a balance between action on climate change and the jobs of Australian workers was something he understood from the start. Alex was tireless, hard-working contributor to the parliamentary uh, uh, work schedule. Uh, you often hear people lament the fact that question time gets all the attention while all the real work is done through the parliamentary committees. Alex contributed to much of that important work as anyone. I won't list all of his committee work because Alex really was one of the hardest workers throughout the committee system that this place has seen. Uh, we, would hear, uh, we, we would be here for a very long time if I was to list all of his service, but I'll mention a few to remind everyone just how hard he worked and the scope of his contributions. In 2015, Alex chaired the Senate Select Committee on the uh, recent allegations relating to conditions and circumstances of the Regional Processing Centre in Nauru. He also twice chaired the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade References Committee between uh, 2014 and 2019 and was chair of the Economics References Committee from June 20 to May 21. In addition, Alex served as deputy chair for several committees, including economics legislation committees. Alex uh, was very diligent in his uh, committee roles and was respected um, and even-handed uh, chair. I think it would be true to say that one of the committee roles he was most proud of was in his involvement uh, in the two joint select committees on road uh, safety. As I mentioned earlier, um, Alex uh, remained committed to del del delivering uh, safe workplaces and better working conditions for transport workers union, uh, uh, transport workers. <coughs> Through his work on the road safety committee, Alex continued to pursue improved road safety, not just for transport workers, but for all Australians. Alex uh, was deputy chair of the, se the second uh, joint uh, select committee on road safety from June 2020 until November um, 2020. Uh, I want to highlight that uh, uh, because I think it perfectly illustrates uh, Alex's commitment to his responsibility as an elected uh, representative in the Australian Parliament. Despite the obvious challenges presented by his illness, Alex continued to contribute to our nation's Parliament. He followed through on things he'd committed to, even when things got very tough. And he continued to contribute to debate via video link, even when his poor health and uh, the COVID-19 pandemic made it impossible for him to get here in person. Alex's work ethic stands as a reminder <coughs> that we're all privileged to be in this place and we have a responsibility to work tirelessly in the interests of the Australians uh, who elected us and whom we represent. Down to earth, hard working and dedicated to what he believed in, Alex Gallagher was a great fighter for the rights and conditions of transport workers. Alex passionately pursued his interest in South Australians <coughs> Uh, in the federal parliament and never forgot his working class roots 
nor his Carlton Football Club. I again offer my condolences to his family, friends and colleagues who will be sadly missed. Senator Keneally. Oh, Senator Fawcett. Oh, Senator Fawcett. Thank you, uh, Senator Keneally. Mr President, I'll be brief. Still, I'm glad you mentioned uh, golf. Um, the word golf comes to mind when I think of Alex, the number of times on a plane from South Australia, the number of times during divisions, the number of times on committee trips he would talk about golf, his favourite clubs, the things he'd played at, uh, etc. But it's the other word golf that I want to mention in three uh, contexts, the G-U-L-F, golf. First is my first impressions of Alex, the gulf between my impression and who he was. Uh, we were both elected in South Australia at the 2010 election and we were in the office of the Electoral Commission when they read out the various scripts that uh, announced that we were going to be elected. And I couldn't help but wonder what a dreadful time I was going to have with this grumpy old bloke <laughs> who uh, seemed so unimpressed by this uh, young Liberal that was uh, in the same room with him. Well, I couldn't have been further from the truth. Uh, he ended up being one of my closer colleagues uh, in this place. Golf of, um, or the golf of St Vincent and Spencer Golf uh, speaks to me of his love for South Australia, the, the remote and western regions of South Australia where he spent a lot of time. And some of the most constructive work that I did with Alex was on the Senate Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade References Committee. And we had a significant breakthrough uh, at Port Augusta, at the top of the Gulf, uh, looking at how defence interacted with regional communities in terms of training areas and how they uh, actually invested. And uh, it was a fantastic committee. Uh, as I said before, Alex is not political. Alex was concerned about outcomes. And it was really useful to be able to work collaboratively uh, to actually extract from defence the fact that when they said local, they meant anything in Australia, as opposed to what came overseas. Whereas we thought local was Port Augusta, Port Pirie, uh, the local towns, the people who actually drove past the training ground. And as a result of that report that Alex was the chair of and, and wrote, uh, we've seen some significant reforms uh, come about how defence engages with local communities through its procurement. And so there will be people around this nation, uh, architects, builders, fencers, sign writers, all kinds of people who will get work on defence projects because of that committee uh, which Alex chaired. And the final gulf, I guess, is the perception that the Australian people have. Uh, it's, it's a gap between their perception that Parliament is a place which is all about antagonistic interaction between people, just point scoring, uh, the perception that you only ever have colleagues here, you don't have friends. Alex is a great example of the fact that across the political divide, people often do work closely together, build good friendships uh, for good outcomes for Australia. Rest in peace, Alex Gallagher. Senator Keneally. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I rise to contribute to the condolence motion for Senator Alex Gallagher. And in doing so, I express my condolences to his wife, Paolo, to his children, his grandchildren, and to his friends and colleagues here, particularly Senator Stirl and Senator Billick. You know, it is never easy to watch somebody die of cancer. And 67 is far too young. Of course, it made it very difficult for Alex and for those who loved him because of the COVID pandemic made it exceptionally difficult for those of us who would have liked to have spent time with him. And I think particularly it's hard today that Senator Stirl and Senator Billick and so many of our colleagues are remote and unable to participate in person in the chamber today. And I'm very grateful that we have the remote participation and the video links that allow that to happen. COVID has been really hard and I think many of us have had experiences in last year of losing someone. It's very difficult to say goodbye to someone when you can't be with them in person. You know, I think back to the day after the main 2019 election, that unexpected result we all had. As I was uh, driving back to my house, 
I've had a phone call. The first phone call I got from a colleague the day after the election was from Alex Gallagher. And he called to offer me his analysis on what had happened, to offer me his frank assessment that we had too many policies, to uh, offer me his views on what we should do next as a party and a movement. And he was already charting within, well, less than 12 hours from the loss, he was already charting our path to victory to the next election. To me, and to many of us, I think all of us, the great tragedy of Alex's death this year is that he will not be with us next year when we hopefully see a Labour government come to power. And when that happens, when that happens, the passion and the values and the policy sense and the commitment to working people that Alex Gallagher brought, not just to the job, but indeed to his every interaction with his colleagues on this side of the chamber and that side of the chamber, in his advocacy, in his committee work, those values, those commitments will sit at the heart of the next Labour government. And so the greatest testament that we, as Alex colleagues, can, play, can pay to him is to ensure that a government that governs for the people he fought for, for the people he represented, and for the values he espoused is the government of Australia. Alex was a fierce warrior for working Australians. He was a dedicated family man, and he was a dear friend to so many in this chamber. And so many here today have already recounted his life and his journey. I think as the Shadow Minister for Immigration, one of the things that strikes me about Alex's family story is it's one that so many Australian families uh, can relate to. And that is a decision to pack up and leave the country that they have known and called home and to come to Australia seeking a better life, seeking more opportunity, seeking to build something new in this country. And I dare say Scotland's loss was Australia's gain when the Gallaghers chose to re relocate first to the Northern Territory where Alex began his career, where he spent much of his career in the 70s and 80s working as a labourer, a truck driver, finally as an airline ramp services operator with the Trans-Australian Airlines. Now those early jobs, they won't surprise anyone who saw Alex in this place. He was always immensely proud of his background. It always had an indelible impact on his politics. And those experiences, particularly in trucking and av aviation, drew Alex to the Australian Labor Party and the trade union movement. He joined the Northern Territory branch of the Australian Labor Party and the Transport Workers Union in 1988. Through both the ALP and the TWU, Alex became a proud advocate for Australian workers, fighting endlessly for their rights and their pay and their conditions. He also served with distinction as the Commissioner for the National Road Transport Commission and as a Director of the South Australian Motor Accident Commission. Now, a constant theme throughout his time, whether it be in the committee work, in parliamentary debates, in our caucus committees, uh, in our caucus was he, he had a straight-talking approach and an affinity for ordinary Australians. He proudly fought for them because he was one of them and rarely, if ever, did they have a better champion than they did in Alex. Now, in his work in this place was a testament to his humility. He always stayed true to those values of his early life and consistently advocated with great pride and passion the issues which impacted uh, ordinary Australians. Senator Farrell has done well in pointing to some of the key work that Alex did on committees. He served on 23 committees during his political career, including that Road Safety and Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Committees. One of the great challenges I had over the past few years, along with Senator Farrell, was to constantly have to check in with Senator Gallagher to know if he was going to be able to make it into Parliament, if he was going to be able to make committee hearings, what arrangements we needed to make. 
And the thing that always struck me in those conversations is that he was generous. He wasn't territorial. He was honest. And sometimes showed an extraordinary determination at times where I might have thought the illness might have gotten the better of him to come in, in here to do estimates, to do committee hearings. But he also was straightforward if he felt he couldn't do it and generous in making sure that his colleagues could step in, not without any, any propriety. One of the other challenges I sometimes faced with Senator Gallagher in our conversations was that he had a lot of views about motions. And sometimes he had a lot of views about the positions we were taking on certain motions. And Senator Stirl is nodding his head on the screen <laughs> and knows of what I speak. And the thing about that is that Alex was frank. He was direct. He sometimes kept me on my toes. He never took anything for granted, and he never took a backward step. What he was, though, at times willing to do was to recognize that there was a forest and see it for the trees. And I make that point because while we are right to laud his straight-talking, passionate conviction, which did never waver, he was part of a collectivist movement, the Great Australian Labor Party. And before that, he was part of another collectivist movement, the Transport Workers Union. And Alex in his conviction and in his passion, never saw himself as greater than the whole. He never put himself outside of that of his colleagues. He understood that we were a collective. And so even, and I'm, he never compromised, but he also never made his view more important than someone else's. He always worked with me and with others to try and find ways to ensure that we were true to our collectivist commitment to one another. So Alex was a good friend to so many in this caucus, and I know that so many of my colleagues will contribute to this condolence motion. I will say at a personal level, he offered me support, friendship, and loyalty far more than I could have ever expected, perhaps because he and Senator Stirl almost very generously, have, have, uh, have recognized my brief period as a member of the Teamsters Union, <laughs> as thank you, Senator Stirl, as appropriate enough to be a somewhat honorary member of the TWU. But Alex, in his advocacy for working people, in his principled, passionate commitment to in fight for the rights of working people, to ensure that they had the opportunity for a better life, to ensure that a working person could support their family, buy a home, have some time for recreation and a holiday on an ordinary working salary. They're humble, important, significant goals for the Australian people, and Alex was constantly motivated by them. As a humble man, I'm sure Alex would have shied away from some of this pomp and circumstance today, but I hope that it's the first of many accolades and honours that serve to remind us of what people can achieve when they live their lives with passion and dedication. So I conclude again by expressing my condolences to Paolo, to their children and grandchildren, and our thoughts, my thoughts in particular, with all of them today as we celebrate Alex's life. We will all miss Alex. The past few months of sittings have not been the same without him, and I hope that we see his likes in this chamber again. His passing is a great loss to this chamber, to the Australian Labor Party, to the Transport Workers Union, and indeed to the nation as a whole. Senator Kitching. Thank you, Mr. President. The death of a colleague while they still serve here in the Senate is a reminder to all of us that our time on earth is limited and we ought never waste a day or indeed a minute here. His passing is a reminder for all of us to stay focused on doing the most good we can in the limited time we're given. Like me, like all Labor senators, he was haunted by the fact that we have been out of office for all but six years of the last 25. Mr. President, I am sad to be eulogising Alex Gallagher. 
but I am also weary of reflecting on so many careers like his. Too much time spent in opposition, not enough time with the chance to make real change. All that time, all those missed opportunities, all the good that should have been done, that could have been done. It is a common sense statement of the obvious to say you can only do good when you are actually in, of in office. Senator Birmingham and Senator Mackenzie have both referred to the quote from Theodore Roosevelt that his, Alex's daughter Caroline um, gave to him for his first speech. But Alex and I discussed last year another Roosevelt quote. So I would be driving up to Canberra last year and I would speak to Alex, I would phone Alex, and Alex was either at the golf club or sometimes resting at home. And that quote was from, he said to me, you know, that man in the arena quote. And that is, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. But who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself for a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. Alex was his usual dry self in discussing that quote, but there was also a poignancy because he said to me, you can never be in the arena forever. Alex would want this, for us to work tirelessly from now until the election, focusing on what matters to Australian families so that we can have the privilege of governing on their behalf. Alex would want that. Men like Alex Gallagher come from a labour tradition rooted in common sense. The wisdom and life experience that comes from hard work, driving trucks, making airports work and two decades of representing hard workers at the mighty Transport Workers Union and representing all South Australians since 2010. Long before there were terms like virtue signalling, inner city elites and wokeness, Alex Gallagher despised them. He was interested in what Labor was doing for working people. Not talking, not positioning, not excusing, but actually doing. I wonder if Alex Gallagher once ever read or paid much attention to the talking points usually sent out by various prime ministers or leaders' offices in the time he was here. I don't think anyone could write a script for Alex Gallagher. I doubt anyone dared. <coughs> when he took some time off, fighting the fight of his life against an insidious cancer, I filled in for him briefly on the Economics Committee. After speaking with him and assessing the contributions he'd made, I had one look at the proposal before that committee, a half-considered Treasury thought bubble about criminalising <coughs> cash transactions greater than $10,000, and I did my very best to channel Alex Gallagher by asking some tough, direct, pointed questions about the measure that would have caused great inconvenience and imposition on older people, among many others. He already made it clear that he was deeply sceptical about the merits of the idea, no matter who supported it. And the committee approved it in principle, as it was government, government and opposition policy in principle, but with a list of long conditions precedent that gave the Treasury a great deal to think about. We haven't seen the measure in legislation and I don't think we will for quite some time until the committee's bipartisan concerns are seriously addressed by the bureaucracy. And Senator Fawcett has reminded me about the trip to Port Augusta. So we got out of the airport and into a minibus and Alex sat up the back and David sat down the front and I looked at them both and said, we are not spending this entire trip in different parts of the minibus, are we? So in the end we sat together and David, Senator Fawcett is correct. It was a great trip. And I was very lucky because I was with two very thoughtful people, people who wanted to do good. So I can't thank Alex anymore, but I thank Senator Fawcett. But that was a great trip and I learnt a lot. Also in the Senate Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee, no one could ever accuse Alex Gallagher of being unsound. He was from that tradition, also mine, 
of belief in our alliance with America, a great country, a belief that Israel must exist. And I can't help thinking when AUKUS was announced, Alex Gallagher would have loved AUKUS. While Alex didn't seek glory or boast about many achievements here, this is just a small example of Alex Gallagher's common sense and good judgment. It's an illustration of the impact that men like Alex Gallagher can have here and why we need more people like Alex Gallagher here. Just because a powerful bureaucracy wanted it, Senator Gallagher needed to be persuaded on the merits, assessed not through a prism of what Canberra's bureaucracy wanted, but what would actually benefit the lives of the people Labor senators are here to represent. We're not here to make good impressions on Radio National or among insiders. We're not here to trend on Twitter. We are here to do what Alex Gallagher did all his working life, to champion labour values, the right to work, the right to be safe at work, the right to be treated with dignity at work in a society that leaves no one behind. Alex was gruff, a straight shooter, honest and wise. Senator Stirl has referred to him as Mr Happy. But underneath that grouchiness, as I find so often the case with most grouchy people, was a heart of gold and a restlessness that we weren't doing enough for the people he was sent here to fight for. In the days ahead, when we're debating self-indulgent propositions in labour forums, when we're slogging through the detail of unwise bureaucratic proposals in Senate committees, when we're thinking about what kind of Labour Party we need to be, what kind of government we should aim to be, I will think about Alex Gallagher. Today, as they have been over the past few months, my thoughts have been, are with Paola, Alex's family, his staff and his friends. I'm sure many of us had, have had conversations with Alex about his family and many about his grandchildren. May his memory be an example to all of us. Vale. Senator Marielle Smith. Thank you, President. It is with great and deep sadness that I rise to speak on this motion as well, but it is also my honour. It was my honour to have known Senator Gallagher, to have served by his side in this place, and to have called him and his beautiful wife, Paola, my friends. Like all of us in this place, we are each the product of our life experience, but more importantly, we are the product of those who we love and those who love us in return. And the things we do here, the things we hope to achieve, and in Alex's case, certainly did achieve, belong to the people we love and who love us too. And so I want to acknowledge his family and their contribution to everything that Alex was able to do as a senator. I want to make some personal reflections on my relationship with Alex soon, but first I do just want to pay special focus to his legacy and his achievements during his time in the Senate. And Alex, if you're listening, I have to say sorry. I'm going to refer to notes as I do this. And I know you really, really hate senators bringing notes into the chamber. I'm looking at Senator Stoker. I think uh, she fell victim to one of his uh, points of order referring to notes. It was one of the first points of order he referred me to as a young senator that we are not meant to read from notes in this place. So I am sorry, Alex. Alex knew the importance of staying true to Labor values, the importance of providing Australians a fair go and a better chance for all, as he said. These values drove him throughout his entire career. And whether you sat on these benches or you sat opposite, everyone knew what Alex stood for, everyone knew his values. His first speech outlined what he would fight for as a parliamentarian, and it was clear and direct as Alex was the transport industry, road safety and superannuation. And his contribution in a policy sense to all of these areas was substantial and unwavering. He brought real world perspective to this place, but he also brought an incredible intelligence. And his immediate impact on parliament saw the Labor government bring in the Road Safety Remuneration Tribunal into legislation. This was an objective that Alex alongside his colleagues and comrades at the TWU, had fought for for almost two decades. Now that fight had to continue after a change in government saw that tribunal dismantled. But Alex kept up that fight. In fact, there wasn't a day 
that he served in this chamber were transport workers who he had once been, who he served alongside and represented and advocated for. His whole career went front of his mind. There was no better friend of transport workers than Alex Gallagher and of super too. This was one of his passions. He knew the benefits of super, the intrinsic benefits that it could bring to working Australians, its impact on dignity in retirement, its economic benefits to Australia. He was absolutely passionate. And in his last months in the Senate, I know he was also becoming increasingly passionate about the disparity for women in superannuation. And this is a fight I will continue on his behalf. But I think his biggest legacy in this place was his impact alongside his dear mate, Senator Still, on road safety. And this came from an almost five year stint as a director with the Motor Accident Commission that he served on before entering politics. Alex was acutely aware of the devastation to victims and their families, as well as the economic devastation caused by the unnecessary loss of life and catastrophic injuries suffered on our roads. He was deeply disappointed in the progression of the national road safety strategy targets never being met and he fought incredibly hard to make sure that road safety was on the political map. That included through his work on the parliamentary friends of road safety. It was very evident in his work as estimates and his push for the government to form the office of road safety within the department. On the 11th of November, the government announced that autonomous emergency braking technology would be mandated in the Australian design rule by 2023. This would save 580 lives, avoid tens of thousands of serious and minor injuries and have a net benefit of close to $1.9 billion. Alex first called for the mandating of this technology in September 2014. He saw the need for this, he fought for it relentlessly until it was achieved. He knew this policy area better than anyone. He believed in it deeply and he has had an incredible legacy in this space, which will never be forgotten. His committee worked too, where he pushed for common sense results. He was true to his principles and he would advance his views whether or not they aligned with the views of our party, often. The River Murray was a huge passion of Alex's and one area that he was deeply passionate about policy-wise uh, was the NDIS. He served on the NDIS committee. And I know these, the issues relating to the NDIS, especially the times that we saw the NDIS not live up to its promise. We saw it fail the people who needed it most. These issues weighed on Alex heavily and he was incredibly dedicated and focused on how he could use his role on that committee to improve the lives of Australians with disability. He loved our state. He loved his duty electorate of Grey. He travelled there regularly. He never flew in and flew out. When he went to Grey, he wanted to stay. He wanted to be amongst it. And one of the proudest moments he had as the duty member of, for Grey was when the Elliston Reconciliation Monument was erected after much debate in the town of Elliston, which is almost halfway between Port Lincoln and Sejuna. Alex supported the monument recognising the massacre of 1849, where the local First Nations people uh, were driven off the cliff, as it's described. Alex considered the official opening as one of his more memorable and important moments as a senator. Alex was a natural at the work he did. He was incredibly focused and incredibly hardworking. He did the reading, he did the work. He never turned up unprepared. He always turned up knowing what he wanted to get out of a hearing, out of his day in parliament, out of a speech he would give. He never did anything without purpose. And we saw this work ethic, this focus of his so intensely when he was sick, when he refused to slow down, when he refused to step back. He believed in his work. He believed in what he did. And he was determined to continue fighting the fight that he believed in representing the people he stood for right until the end. I know we've all had different experience of Alex. We've all seen different sides of him and I'm sure we can uh, all remember moments fondly where we found opportunities for agreement with him, where his gruff exterior faded away and you saw the warmth and the passion beneath. We can probably all also 
remember now fondly moments where we disagreed with Alex and you certainly weren't left wondering uh, about Alex's position or what his view was. But Alex gave people a fair hearing always. If he had a good idea, he would listen to you. If you were well reasoned in your argument, he would listen to you. And he fought for what he believed was right. And I know some of our colleagues may have liked him sometimes to fight a little less loudly, sometimes a little less publicly, but that was Alex. When he was on a mission, when he believed something, he took his role as a public figure seriously and he fought for that with every tool in his arsenal. Alex was an extremely hard worker and his career, I think, is best referenced by him himself in his maiden speech when he refers to Theodore Roosevelt saying, far and away the best prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. And Alex certainly got that opportunity, he certainly did that. Alex was an extremely private person who loved his family immensely. You never see a bigger smile on his face than when he was talking about Paola, or his kids, and especially his grandchildren. Possibly a smile which would rival it though was when he talked about golf, his passion for golf, and a, a round of golf a week was never enough for him. He also loved to have a punt and uh, Saturdays were often uh, Saturday morning at the North Adelaide Golf Club and in the afternoon horse racing. And his staff recalled to me a story, apparently this was before my time, but where there was one Melbourne Cup day and the coalition government scheduled a sitting week which overlapped with the Melbourne Cup. And I, uh, I hear uh, other senators would have to confirm that there has never been an angrier parliamentarian in this place than Alex Gallagher in that moment. Alex's staff formed a powerful bond with him. And thank you, Senator Stirl, for reading the words of Matthew, who he had a very special bond. And I know Matthew misses him very, very deeply. But his other staff do too. Peter and Matthew both began in Alex's office when Alex began as a senator, and they stayed the course with him. Susie worked with him for nine years, and Brendan worked with him for seven. Pauline had been there for a few years too, and I, I do wonder if Pauline expected that. Those who know Pauline know she is a, uh, was a, a firm and passionate uh, member of the left and uh, was perhaps surprised that she found herself working in Alex's office, but they formed a very close friendship too and a, a commitment and a passion for, for the work Alex was doing on the NDIS. His office, his staff would say that their office was a family which is testament to Alex as a boss and as a person. He could be gruff, yes, but he was a good and warm man. And when you were in the fold, when you were in the family with Alex, you knew it, you knew it deeply. And I don't think I've ever in my time in politics, not just as a senator, but for the many years I've been around politics before, I don't think I've ever seen an office as close and connected as Alex's were and as loyal to their senator. And I want to acknowledge them because this has been a really tough time. All of his staff stuck with him as he was sick and right up to the end. They believed in what Alex was doing too. They knew the man so well and they believed in what he was doing. Alex had another work family as well and that's his family at his beloved union, the Transport Workers Union. And I know Ian Smith and Alex's friends at the TWU are watching these proceedings now live in Adelaide. Indeed, uh, under the sign of the Alex Gallagher Training Centre, fitting monument for a man who made an incredible contribution to that union and all of the people that that union represents, all of the values that that union represents. I know everyone at the TWU will feel this loss deeply because when Alex left the TWU to become a senator, he never walked away from those he served with. He was always there, always providing support, always there to those who needed him. And one of the amazing things about Alex was he really, he really believed in people. When he believed in people, he helped them. He gave them active support, active mentoring, active encouragement. If you had Alex in your corner, you knew it. And even when things were tough, even when you doubted yourself, Alex would be there backing you and pulling you up, sometimes really gruffly, quite aggressively, but if he believed in you, he would make sure you did your best. I will miss 
Alex deeply. This place will not ever be the same for me without him. I want to make a personal reflection here. Alex was a formidable figure and in my childhood his name loomed large. Alex was once my father's adversary but he became a close and valued friend of me and my family. It's really easy in politics to make simple assessments of people, one-dimensional assessments of people. Alex never did that. He certainly never did it of me. He didn't do it of others in this chamber, even when people were often quick to make simple assessments of him, one-dimensional assessments of him. And I am so grateful that he is a man who judged people on their substance and judged me on my substance and gave me his firm support very early on in my career here in this place and indeed when I was seeking to enter this place. And when I entered the Senate, his support continued. He has guided me throughout my journey here. He has uh, always been generous with his feedback to me. I was scrolling through some messages uh, earlier. Alex used to text me often after my speeches to make sure I had the benefit of his experience and wisdom in this place. Um, some of those uh, critiques were always sharp. He, of course, hated speeches being read. He hated speeches being too polished, but he liked speeches which didn't miss anything or anyone, and they're Alex's words. Alex, when I, was, when I was going through my messages from Alex in preparation for today, there were a few which stood out for me, messages he sent me of encouragement and support. He, he sent me a text defining our role. He said to me, your job is to be different, Marielle. It's to be authentic and to be credible. It's to let people see you, to believe every word that you say. Alex was authentic. You knew it, you knew it. It was very good advice. He also gave me the advice, keep your eye on the main game and most importantly in this place, be yourself. Alex was his self. Alex never had to support me, but he did. He mentored me in the ways of this place. Some of those lessons I will keep with me, some of those um, I might disregard because our styles are pretty different, but I will always value the things he taught me and the lessons he tried to impart. But Senator Stoker, I promise I won't be on my feet if uh, there's, there's notes used in this place. Alex loved Paola deeply. On more than one occasion, I would hear him recount when he was summing up his view on one individual or another. Paola has good judgment. If she thinks someone is decent, then they're okay with me. Paola was the boss. One of the, the last social moments I had with Alex was uh, not long after my daughter Zara was born and Alex and Paola came to visit Clint and I at our home uh, to, deliver, to deliver my son Benjamin another truck, which Alex was uh, always prone to do. He wanted my son to be a truck man and not a bus man. Um, <laughs> very important, Senator Wong. Um, but they also brought uh, a teddy bear for my daughter and there was a bit of a discussion and debate between Alex and Paola because Paola wanted the bear to go on a shelf and to be preserved and kept pristine so that when Zara is older, she could look at the bear and, and you know, have that memory and have that special thing from he, her childhood. And Alex was vehemently opposed to this. The bear was for cuddling, the bear was for playing, the bear was for using. Um, and it just summed up to me uh, Alex's, uh, anyway, a part of Alex's personality. So I'm sorry, Paola, but the bear is coming off the mantelpiece and it will be used and cuddled and loved. Um, it it's, feels quite indulgent in a way to talk about how much we will all miss Alex and how much we loved him. Because of course, those who miss him will be, those who, who missed him the most and will miss him the most are his family, those that he loved the most and who love him the most. His wife, Paola, his children, Ian, Caroline, Terry and Frank, his children-in-law, Sinead, Ian's wife and Tammy, Terry's partner his grandchildren, Connor, Lachlan and Mia. I want to thank you for sharing the man that you loved with this place for so long. It's never without sacrifice. And his achievements, his legacy belong to you and your family as well. I hope you are so proud of what 
your husband, what your father, what your grandfather achieved here. I hope you're so proud of the words that are being spoken about him. We should never be one dimensional or simplistic in our assessment of people who choose to do this role. Alex was a complicated and complex character, but he was a great man. He was a fiercely intelligent man. He worked tirelessly in this place for the values that he held dear. You really, I hope you, you are so proud of his achievement. We are all so proud of his achievements. I know you will all continue to carry Alex's memory in your hearts and I want you to know that his colleagues here in the Senate from all sides of politics will continue to carry that memory too. And we will also continue on with the work which meant so much to Alex. Rest in peace, Alex, friend, Senator. You will be so missed. Senator Sheldon. Good, thank you very much, President. Um, I just want to, I, I get, one of the things that um, struck me when I was thinking about what to say about Alex is the first comments. I've known Alex for 25 years, and not long after I arrived here, the number of people that came up and said, he's tough and he's gruff and he's pretty damn hard to get on with sometimes. I said, well, he's my mate. I find him exactly the same way, so don't feel special. It's just the way he is. A guy who's passionate and strongly believes in what he believes. And also, you know, just so many other speakers said about, he did listen, but he also turned around and mentored people. And I appreciate the great deal of assistance that Alex was always available to have a chat with, um, no matter what the time of day or, or what, he had, what he had on. But also, I, I think that I, I went to many, many years ago to a, to a, a funeral. It was quite a quite a revelation for me. It was uh, a Maori funeral, and a lot of people got up and spoke about from their heart about what they felt about the fellow who just died. And they also got up and said things that were nasty about him, which I thought that was quite surprising. <laughs> But they had a, I, was, I was chatting to uh, a number of those that spoke and, and uh, family members. They said, no, it's really important. You have to really you know, let the spirit um, be released. Um, and if, you don't, if you're not honest and you're not frank, then you're not going to get um, the spirit released. And Alex, um, we're all going to be very frank. And I think one of the things that, um, when I think of that again, is that we had a just a... It wasn't an exclusive group, it was just a group of TWU people that got together and, and uh, some the TWU senators. And uh, we had a, had a wake for Alex and a number of people explained some of their experiences with Alex. Um, how, he worked, how they worked with him in the, entire, in the transport industry and how um, and the sorts of differences that he made. And I'll get to those in a moment, but I just want to say that you know, if you look at some of the statements that Alex said when he first came into this place, uh, his first speech, you know, he said, there is no smoke and mirrors, just plain talking, hardworking employees and employers alike when talking about the transport industry. They all share common attributes, that is, capacity for hard work and a selfless dedication to the task at hand. Now, that can also be a very fine description of Alex, because that's who the man was. Now, of course, as we've talked about, you know, Alex did come with those three very important priorities, road safety, transport industry and superannuation. And there are a few people in Australia who can make a match Alex's experience and expertise in road safety. I want to put on the record as well is the importance of his role that he played at the National Transport Commissioner. I still remember when he got appointed and how proud he was to stand up there and make a difference to have those conversations and those hard conversations in an industry that has way too many deaths. And Alex you know, spoke with passion and every time he came back and gave reports about what was happening at the, um, at the commission. And of course, being a director of the Motor Accident Commission for South Australia was again another important role that Alex took a great deal of, felt a great deal of responsibility, but also passion to make sure that he could that people were properly looked after, that opportunities for turning around and making our roads safer were pursued, but also questions of proper uh, compensation for those that have, uh, were killed in, in, in accidents and incidents. And of course, as, as we all know, he was the chair of the Road Safety Advisory Council of South Australia. 
Alex was a firm believer in the Swedish model for a vision zero. The model recognises that drivers are human and humans make mistakes. I think a bit like um, Alex, I think. Um, he's certainly human and he may have made a few mistakes, but there's no doubting about the passion which he brought to this place and to what he believed in. His freedom and mobility achieved by owning a vehicle he talked about and is tempered by the sickening human and economic cost of vehicle accidents. Alex passionately made sure he pursued all those issues to its fullest. Alex played an important role, of course, and has been mentioned in the Gillard government establishing the Road Safety Remuneration Tribunal in 2012. I had a lot of dealings with Alex over 25 years and many dealings during that period um, in the role that I, I held at the time. And of course, he was scathing when it was abolished and replaced with nothing in 2016. And as someone with decades of experience in the industry, he understood the consequences of that decision better than most. To quote from his speech on the abolition of the bill, a speech that the Australian Road Transport Industry Organisation, Paul Ryan said, described as the best speech I've ever heard given in the Senate. And he said, Alex said, people need to get proper remuneration for fixed and variable and labour costs. Lots of these owner drivers will work themselves to death. I know the things that they go through on a daily basis. I know all about visiting families who have had people in their families not come home from work. This was for me a once in a lifetime opportunity to see some sanity, some fairness and some real reward for that effort. And Alex was spot on and straight to the point. And that's how he always operated. And you know, in, again, on that um, it, at the uh, wake um, uh, Zoom, wake Zoom, um, Michael Kane, the national secretary of the TWU, I think summed up a really incredibly important point about Alex. He said he would take the problem in front of him, distill it into a bite-sized grab, and then figure out how to use the bite-sized grab to fight for the rights of working people. That's what he would do, and he would do it really, really effectively. Michael also tells a story about his trip to South Australia after joining the national office. And if those that don't know, the TW had a tradition of having seven warring factions. It makes any of the political parties here look come tame. Um, but Alex was a person who always fired you know, directly to everybody about what he believed in. Michael said, I landed um, to talk about um, the threat of work choices. And he said, I landed at the Adelaide airport fully expecting to hop in a cab. I walked down the stairs and at the bottom, there is Alex. I said, geez, I didn't expect you to see you here, Alex. And Alex said, do you think I'm going to let the Assistant National Secretary just come to Adelaide and walk around by himself unchaperoned? And of course, Alex put Michael in front of the officials as a, another um, a baptism of fire for Michael as well, and key delegates who all saw, could see that the angst regarding work choices and clearly see what the TW needed to do. And Alex was outspoken again and very supportive of incredibly important steps that were decided by that group of um, workplace leaders and union officials. Uh, he was drawing the crowd out, he was getting people to actually say things that were not, um, um, were, that, that were always in, com could be in conflict with what he was saying because he wanted to draw people out to make sure the best decisions were being made. And it's not um, just union officials and workers uh, had tremendous respect for Alex. He drew respect from the employing side for his toughness, his perseverance, his plain talking and his commitment to working people. During the, um, during the Zoom wake, Steve Schofield, who used to be the head of the industrial relations at Qantas, and butted heads with Alex on a number of occasions. Steve said that he had a lot of mentors over the years on both sides of the table, but you wouldn't guess that Alex was one of them, he said. Steve tells a story about September the 11th, 2001. A horrible, uncertain day for us all, but particularly for those in the aviation industry. And Steve said, and I quote, I got two phone calls in the morning of September the 11th, and one was from Alex. And he said words to the effect of, listen, young fella, it's going to be a tough couple of days. 
But if there's anything we can do as a union, just let us know. That was the side of Alex that many didn't see. Then there was a side that many did, the side that was tough as nails. Matt Bernal, an official down at Alex's South Australian branch of the TWU, tells a story about the 2017 South Australian branch elections night. Matt was watching the count together with Alex's chief of staff, Matt Morosi. Both Ian Smith and Alex are asking how Ian is going in, in the count. The two Matts look at each other and wonder why they, what the, who they, how they're going to tell Ian that he's lost. And worse still, he says, how I'm going to deal with Alex, he's going to kill us both. Now, fortunately, Ian got over the line in the end, so they never have to find out Alex's wrath. But Alex's other passion, of course, was superannuation, which has been mentioned. He strongly believed that working people deserve a retirement with dignity. In his first speech, he said, members will always demand value for money and it is my belief that this is the best achieved by the industry fund not-for-profit model, with all profits back to member accounts. Trustee directors representing employers and employees and only acting in the best interests of members are a world-class model. Various studies have shown that many funds have achieved brand status, with loyalty driven by industry participation and trust in the Board of Representatives. Alex was the first chairman of the TWU Superannuation Investment Committee. And Frank Sandy, the current CEO of the TWU Super Fund, summed up on the, the night of the Zoom wake. I have a wonderful memories of a person who was strong, direct, really clear, and always with a purpose. While we are doing this, we're doing this for members. Are we doing this for, to make things better? That's the questions that Alex would ask. And that's my mem memories of Alex. Paul Ryan, who's one of the employer side directors at the TW Super, added, we and every transport worker owes Alex a debt of gratitude that could probably be measured in dollar terms. If you want to go back to when he started, it is worth somewhere around $100,000 over the last 15 years. That's for per member. That's the, the additional uh, legacy that Alex leaves. And it's a lasting legacy. And Lou Coy, who was on the TW Super executive team, told me, Alex was a, a wonderful person. He seemed to always have time for me. He would always ask me and was interested in my life. He was a wonderful person and a gentleman. That is the Alex, of Alex and his legacy at TW Super. Then, of course, there's the legacy of Alex, the TW itself. Uh, Barry Norton, who's a TW organiser in Alex's South Australian Northern Territory branch, said, there are a few times over the last two and a half years where people walk in, they've been union members for the longer, longest time and they remember Alex for what he did. I'm very well aware of the boots that I'm trying to fill and I'll do my best to do that. Because Alex being the previous Northern Territory organiser. Now Nick McIntosh, the National Assistant Secretary of the TWU, again one of the Zoom participants for Alex's Wake, described him as a mentor. He always spoke words of wisdom. He was always welcoming to me. There were good times. We had conversations in his Parliament House office where he would never say too much, but just enough that I could tell exactly what he was getting at. You could tell just from the interactions how smart he was, how switched on he was, but most importantly, how much he would always stand for working people. Now, someone who stood Alex for working people all his life, that's how the best way to remember him in this place. That's how we remember him at the TWU and all of, our, all of his uh, work colleagues and the people he represented and, and protected and defended and supported. But of course, Alex's most important legacy, of course, is his family. And his family, as we mentioned just you know, previous to me, you know, his family, both of his staff, but also his children and grandchildren, and of course, his very loved uh, Paolo. Yeah, wonderful. Um, you know, I think we can all recite on so many occasions where Alex would talk to us about the love of his family um, and what they were getting up to. He was a, you know, such a great uh, family man and saw that as part of his real worth and real value. 
And I know this has been used bef uh, a bit earlier today and I thought I might still use it because um, I think it does describe something very accurate about Alex. He said, you know, his daughter Caroline when Alex's first speech um, and it was a quotation from Theodore Roosevelt. And far and away, the best prize life has to offer is a chance to do work, hard, do work, hard at work and worth doing. And of course, Alex's record both here and at the Transport Workers Union was an indictment of that. And of course, his good friend, Ian Smith, um, you know, recites to me, recited to me and uh, the secretary down there, a very close friend of Alex and somebody um, who was a close mate. And he said, he told me for the, it was the first one to tell me that when Alex was getting treatment, literally the following day, he would go on the golf course. Now, I haven't heard anyone else that gets treatment who can do that, but Alex did it because he was determined to make sure that it didn't hold him back, that he was gonna do the things that he had passion for, and that's why he came back to the Senate that's why I came back here to speak and came back to be involved, of course, you know, with the dangers of COVID, uh, particularly people in his circumstance. That's a man with passion, it's a man with dedication and it's a person worth emanating. Thank you, Alex. I'll miss you, mate. Senator Walsh. I'm happy to say to Senator okay, Patrick. I'll, I'll, yeah. We'll go to Senator Patrick next just to share the call around a little. And then uh, um, to you, thank, Walsh. thank you very much. Uh, I will be relatively brief. Um, I don't know how I became a friend of Alex's, and actually I don't even know how he became a friend of mine. It kind of just happened. Uh, I don't know whether it started in meetings that we had in cafes when I was an advisor to Nick Xenophon heading back to, to uh, Adelaide. Uh, I don't know whether it was through my working with him on the economics committee. And I know people did talk to, uh, uh, have been talking about his passion for road safety, but uh, there were also other things he had passions for, passion for, including naval shipbuilding. He was very concerned about uh, workers down in Adelaide, uh, and um, I'm just sad he didn't get to see uh, that particular committee through. But, uh, but uh, what I I also used to chat with him in the chamber and also around the building, often uh, with Glenn um, uh, in, in tow, so I think uh, in, in common we all know that uh, the two of them operated together um, mischievously in some, in some instances. What I'll just say about, about uh, Alex is he was simple and effective. Simple, I note uh, uh, Christina made a mention of uh, some, some frustration that, that there might have been. Uh, Alex always saw things in a different way to others. Where other people found complexity, he found simplicity. And I think that was the bane of his, of his frustration um, uh, with, with others in, in this place in, in terms of a professional frustration. The other thing, I'd, when I say effective, um, I used to watch him in committees and... I, and I never thought he was excited about uh, too much, he, and even some of his questions were quite boring. But then I'd go back and read the Hansard and go, that was a really good question. He was really effective. So that's the other thing that, uh, that, that uh, uh, struck me about Alex. I will reveal now that, uh, as we all know around this place, when trying to get advocacy for any particular issue, you kind of think, do I go to someone who's got carriage of a, of a particular topic or do I go to someone who's got passion about a particular topic? Well, what I could say to, to, the, to the Labor Party at least now is if Alex came to me and asked me for something, almost always I did it. Just because I knew that it, particularly if it was a topic I didn't know anything about, uh, that Alex uh, will, you know, would only come to me when he was passionate and he was just a, a, a genuine and honest guy. And for me, that was enough. And I'd always say yes to him. I can't think of a time where I said no when he asked me to support something. And I think that comes down to how I would summarise him, and that is genuine and honest and someone that I will miss. Senator Walsh. 
you very much, uh, President, and thank you to Senator Stirl um, for your words earlier. And I know that all of our thoughts um, are definitely with you today. Uh, and I would like to join colleagues in recognising the contribution and the passing of Senator Alex Gallagher. Uh, and it was as a new senator in 2019 that I met Alex uh, as part of the Senate Economics References Committee, um, of which he was chair. Uh, and so my reflections uh, on Alex come from my experiences entering this place just two years before Alex's time here came to an end. Uh, so I have a few memories of Alex that I'd like to, to share with the chamber uh, and with Alex's loved ones who may be listening um, or reading the speeches later on that are given in his honour today. Uh, and they are memories of someone who combined complete dedication and commitment to the people he came here to represent um, with an absolute unique larrikinism and irreverence. Uh, and one of my first experiences of Alex's particular brand of irreverence was doing Senate hearings uh, together during um, lockdowns in 2020. Uh, and hearings were, of course, conducted remotely um, with senators and witnesses participating um, online. Uh, and at one such hearing, Alex appeared uh, in a peaked cap, um, headphones on, uh, with a very impressive bookshelf in the background uh, against the wall behind him. And so far, so good. Uh, impressive bookshelves were a feature of remote meetings and hearings in 2020. Um, but Alex, of course, went one better. Uh, and he had a large automobile in the background uh, as well. Uh, and I heard a voice um, online over the feed of either a witness or secretariat asking in the background, is that a senator in a garage? Uh, and it was indeed, uh, and car in full view, uh, and from his garage, Senator Alex Gallagher declared those hearings open. Uh, and on that day, and really every day, Alex approached his work here with a completely, like completely unpretentious disposition, um, sprinkled with a fair amount of an up yours attitude. Um, he had an attitude of good humour alongside the hard work, commitment and dedication that he showed for the people he represented. Uh, and uh, I have similar recollections to those of Senator Patrick's um, of being uh, spending many a late night at Senate estimates um, in uh, economics committee hearings um, with Senator Gallagher. Uh, and as a new senator for me, the Labor question pack, of course, was something, was something of um, a lifeline uh, to, to keep your head above water and stay afloat. Um, for Alex, uh, it was more of a guide uh, at best. Um, and occasionally it was something to flick through whilst leaning back in his chair, um, getting ready for the next witness much as one might casually flick through a magazine at the supermarket counter before proceeding to check out, leaving the magazine behind. Um, as has been noted, Alex relied instead um, on his own preparation, uh, and he was the same here in the chamber. Um, when Alex spoke in the Senate, he usually did so um, without notes, prosecuting his points admirably um, and always with um, passion passion for the workers that he proudly came here to represent uh, and who he never left behind. Uh, and I do think this is what Alex's colleagues will remember the most. He really never forgot where he came from. He never forgot who he went into parliament to fight for. He never stopped being that union organiser on the hustings, representing people working hard in an essential industry, doing the long hauls overnight, um, while the rest of us sleep. Uh, and it was indeed in this chamber in my first few weeks here that Alex came uh, and sat down next to me with a clipboard. Uh, and as a former union organiser myself, I knew I was about to be signed up for something. Uh, and for some weeks, I had worn it as a badge of honour that I had not signed up to um, many of the various, to any of the various um, parliamentary friends groups on offer in the early weeks. Um, of a new parliament. I'd let them all um, fly by in my emails. Uh, but then Alex sat down next to me that day with a pen and a piece of paper uh, and looked me straight in the eye. Uh, and so to this day, I am a card-carrying member of his beloved parliamentary friends of road safety. Um, to the end, Alex was always on the side of working people, his people. Uh, and I was one of uh, many of Alex's colleagues who joined online to pay 
uh, my respects uh, at his funeral um, remotely. Uh, and as a proud life member of my own union, I was deeply moved to see that Alex was making his final journey under the protection of the flag of his union, the Transport Workers Union. A life spent standing up for working people is indeed a life well lived. A life spent as part of the collective of the labour movement is a life of service to others. Uh, and for that life of service, um, I pay my respects to Alex today and extend my condolences to his family, his friends and his union, and again to his best mate, Glenn Still. Thank you, President. Senator Colbeck. Mr President, uh, and I would like to associate myself with remarks from all colleagues across the chamber in relation to the tributes they're paying to the life of Senator Alice Gallagher. Uh, he was somebody who was without question true to his beliefs and his values, and they were true Labor values, they were true union beliefs. Um, and as Senator Sheldon said, that's what he was respected for, and he was respected for that across the chamber. Um, I won't share some of my stories about him in a personal sense because they were personal conversations. But they were conversations of fellowship of fellow senators um, and particular circumstances at the time. Uh, and it was, they were very human interactions. And they were the things that I really valued about um, working with Alex. We shared again some late nights, both on the same side of the table at estimates and uh, on the opposite sides of the table at estimates. And if Alex thought that you were serving up a load of BS, there was absolutely no question that you were going to be told that you were serving up a load of BS, or the officials for that matter, and he just wanted an answer to his question. Um, it, was, it was pretty simple. So with Alex, you knew what you were going to get. Uh, he, was, he was just dead set straight. Uh, you knew where he was coming from, you knew why he was coming from there and the comments that have been made by so many colleagues across the chamber about uh, the fact that he didn't forget where he came from and he didn't change. He was Alice Gallagher who became a senator through his time as a member in the union movement and he brought all of those practical elements and experience with him to this place and he applied those to policy and he was a thinker, he really was. Uh, he, he assessed things and he applied those things and that practical knowledge of the work that he'd done to this place and it's, it's spoken about often that uh, one of the great things about Australia's parliament is that people who come from a really grassroots practical background can end up in this place. He's a great example of that as someone who came from a different country, uh, became an Australian citizen and then came here to represent his values, his beliefs and his community in this place. Something that we, um, we should all celebrate. Um, the work that he did, that he did in, re in respect of a focus on road safety, and it's a really fitting tribute that was made to him by his union uh, in naming the training centre in South Australia after him. I think that's absolutely a, f a fantastic thing. Um, Sturlow? And apologies for not addressing you as a as Senator Stirl, but um, it was mentioned early by Senator Mackenzie, and uh, I'm pleased that you mentioned it as well in your contribution. Um, the the Waldorf and Stadler thing. Um, Stirl and Gallagher went together like Waldorf and Stadler, in my view. I mean, it was, and some of those late night sittings where you'd seen them see them both leaning forward with their chin on their elbows looking across the chamber, obviously comparing something that was going on over there, but they had a synergy and a symbiosis together. They clearly thought uh, the same uh, and a real team. So, so, Glenn, I know that you would miss Alex uh, immensely. Uh, and so particularly my condolences to you as, and to all my other 
uh, Labor colleagues across the chamber, but still, oh, I know how much he meant to you, the conversations and the journey that you travelled together over a long period of time. And I certainly did think about um, you a lot when we, when, we lost Gal Al when we lost Alex. 67 is way too soon. 67 is way too soon. Uh, and so to Alex's wife, Paula, Paula um, and his four children and, and extended family, uh, and to all of those in the Labor family, uh, sincere condolences for the loss. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, made a contribution over a decade here in this place. Um, Senator Sheldon talked about him coming here during COVID with all of the things that he was dealing with so that he could make a contribution. And certainly we recognise, I, I recognised uh, the importance and the significance of him doing that at a time that was a significant risk to him through uh, what we were all facing with the national pandemic. Um, and I see him as a genuine loss. So Alex, rest in peace, mate. And uh, to the Labor family and his family, personally, uh, sincerest condolences. Senator O'Neill. much, Mr President. And I rise too to make a contribution to the condolence motion for the passing of the late Senator Alex Gallagher. I want to associate myself with the remarks of all of those who've preceded me. It's been a great telling of the breadth of a man who brought himself, everything of himself, to this chamber. And I think that's the words that I would describe Mr Senator Gallagher with is absolutely the hardest, one of the hardest working senators that I ever saw in this place. And um, I'm reminded of the day when we actually heard about his passing, standing here in the chamber, as much as we knew that he was unwell, the shock of that coming washed over us. Because we don't expect in this place people that we work with not to show up one day. We know about life and death, but we encounter it in such a profound and intense way in this chamber, dedicated to the work as much as we know about one another, and people have spoken about the man, Alex Gallagher, today, I think there was genuinely still this amazing shock amongst all of us that one of our colleagues had gone. And it's, it's in this period of time, this time warp that we're all living, the COVID reality. We're not sure if we're home or we're here. Can we see our friends? Can we see our family? How are we accessing healthcare? What sort of health care did Alex? All of that was swirling around. But I remind senators that it's only a few months ago that Alex Gallagher was standing up in this chamber on the 24th of February. At two minutes to question time, this is what he said. In the couple of minutes that are available to me, I want to put on the record, and it's a very sombre duty, during the 12 months until the end of December 2020, 170 people died in crashes involving heavy trucks. This includes 104 deaths in crashes involving articulated trucks and 68 deaths involving heavy rigid trucks. I want to put to the Senate a simple proposition. There is probably no other industry in Australia, certainly none that I'm aware of, that incurs this level of death. And the injuries are not stated here today. And the level of death is through the roof. I don't know how, as a government, a state government, a territory government, or a council, that we can put up with the fact that we're seeing 170 people die at work. That's where they're dying, at work, on the road, and we're not having an outpouring of a call for action. There have been 170 workplace deaths in the 12 months to the end of 2020. It's a disgrace. The federal parliament should move on it, as should every other parliament in Australia. And I think of all of us here, what we can say in two minutes what are the snippets of our, con of, of our contributions that people are going to take and take to heart? In those two minutes, so much was said, so much of power, so much of a call for us to serve the nation. 
Alex Gallagher has been valorised today by members of the Labor Party, by friends and colleagues who have only known him in this place as a Labor senator, but by colleagues who have shared the journey literally on the road with him, with the TWU, unionists, brothers and sisters in arms, who have fought the good fight that still leaves us at the point that he described on the 24th of February. Labor, Liberal, National, Green, Independent Senators, all in here with so many good words to speak about a man who gave his all to this job. I was really taken by the comments of my colleague, Senator Mario Smith, who I'm, I'm pleased to see is still in here, um, when she noted the contribution uh, in her mentoring from Alex. He gave her great advice, but one thing stuck People should believe every word you say. And that's how I heard Alex Gallagher when he spoke in this place. There are people who make contributions and they'll be applauded. We should accept that there are gifts differing amongst us. But there's something about the truth and its voice that is powerful. And it's a thing that changes us. And if you're very, very lucky, People give of themselves and they come to this place and they speak with truth. And Alex Gallagher did that with passion, with style, with vigour, with energy and with great talent every single time he stood up here and he opened his mouth. And I don't think there'd be a lot of people who would be, would be able to say that about. Constantly speaking the truth. I got to know Alex very slowly. I always felt that he was sort of watching what was going on. And today when, uh, Senator Steele, you, you read the words of Matthew Marozzi and um, Matthew said he warmed to me, I guess I'd, I'd have to say that's a kind of a similar experience that I had, that Alex watched and he waited. And we really didn't get to work together because we were on different inquiry paths so much of our time here until um, I did a few hearings on the, uh, the, the famous RAT committee which does have a particular flavour of camaraderie that I think brings out the best in so many of the senators who are in it. But um, it was on the multi-jurisdictional management Murray-Darling Basin Plan Committee that I know uh, we, we travelled on, um, Mr President, uh, when you were a, a lowly backbencher and the chair of that committee. And the work that we did on that committee, uh, I think, as I just had a look at it today, was evidence of the kind of work that Alex did. He was absolutely always prepared. He absolutely made sure that he knew what was going on, that he'd done all of the reading. And uh, he, he got to a point in the, in the hearing uh, the day of the 11th of December 2019, and he was asking about transparency of water markets. This is a man who can be diminished and described just as a hard-working man, just. A hard-working man is a great thing, but when you're blessed with the gift of intelligence that he had and he brought to this role, he was able to ask a question about the transparency of water markets, engage in an interchange with experts, allow and invite me into the, the questioning and recover and make a point at the end. And this is what he said, He's one sentence, after a bit of a discussion about it, there is always someone who benefits from information asymmetries. Now that is not the sort of language you're going to hear too much on the two-way radio. But people on the two-way radio know exactly what that feels like. And Alex not only knew what it felt like, he came in here and he told it how it would be received best in whatever context and he found the words to do that. Not everybody can do that and I just really really watched and admired that greatly. I want to um, proclaim him in my experience as a man of insight, a strategic thinker of intelligence, a man who made sure that he had mastery of the information that he needed to do the job, a preparedness to undertake the tasks that fell to his lap, and a generosity in his leadership as a chair able to engage and move everyone along together. Towards the end of um, Alex's time here with me, he, uh, he reached out and said, you should come and have 
a bottle of uh, South Australian wine with me. And we had the most remarkable and memorable evening. I did feel like I was getting an incredible download of insight from a man who had a sense that his time was limited. And I made notes when I left that, that meeting, and I've kept them, because there was incredible sharp insight and truth in what he had to say. Alex Gallagher was a loving husband. Uh, Paola, he spoke of you of many, many times, and he talked about his trips to Italy with you. He also talked about all of his children and his grandchildren with smiles and joy and a genuine love that took him through the days while he was away from you. Well, now in the days that you're away from him, be assured that he never, ever left you. His body might not have been with you, but his heart was always with you. And uh, of those trips to Italy, when I asked him if he'd been to many of the places where you go and you look at the sites, he said no. He'd gone to a village and he put his roots down there. That tells you something about the man. He made, he made home in places where it was appropriate to make home and he stuck to places where he could be authentic and genuine. So in, in closing, I want to remind us all, each one of us who valorised uh, Senator Alex Gallagher today, those who've stayed in the chamber for the whole time, uh, those of made a contribution and those who might be listening and would like to do something. Alex Gallagher on the 24th of February this year really put a challenge out to us. The work of road safety is not finished. It affects all of us. We all drive on roads. He showed us a way. If we really are going to honour him, then we should definitely make a commitment in his honour to advance that cause and not lose focus. Can I say, to Paola and the family that while I know your, your, your grief is great uh, at this moment, I hope the words that we've put on the record today give you some comfort. And may I say that to all people who loved Alex, his staff, the friends of a lifetime, all the unionists who worked with him and sound, by the sounds of things against him on occasion, uh, to his family, May they find comfort in these words today. And after all your years of hard work, Alex, may you rest in peace. Senator Grogan. Thank you. I rise to pay my respects and to offer my condolences for the sad passing of Senator Alex Gallagher. Alex and I did not know each other well, but I rise to pay my respects as I have taken uh, the sad honour of filling the vacancy that he leaves behind. In every sense of the phrase, Alex was a working class man, he'd been a labourer, a truckie, a proud unionist and a committed member of the Australian Labor Party. And while Alex and I did not know each other well, we had many connections. His early career mirrored that of my own father, who was a labourer, a truckie and an executive of the Transport and General Workers Union in the UK and in Ireland. And I believe that Alex and I would have had a lot to talk about, and I am poorer for not having the opportunity uh, of those robust discussions with him. When he came to this place, he clearly outlined exactly what he was here for, exactly what his priorities were. The transport industry, road safety and superannuation. And he then pursued those issues keenly and with dedication for the duration of his time here. We've heard a lot about his committee work, um, which is impressive, 23 different committees ranging across a whole, all sorts of different areas. His advocacy for transport industry and road safety was unparalleled. He successfully campaigned for the establishment of the Road Safety Remuneration Tribunal and then fought passionately against its abolition. He also had the foresight and understanding of the role of the transport industry in reducing emissions. And in his first speech, he noted, the industry's contribution to carbon emissions is a significant challenge. Doing nothing is not an option, as passing on the increased costs imposed 
will have a significant impact on inflation, affecting every household and business in the community. On his death, Alex has been described as a champion for the blue collar worker, a straight shooter, and someone who dedicated his life to the interests of working people. As Labor leader Anthony Albanese said recently, he was a no-nonsense man who knew what he stood for. He was a fighter, he was dedicated, and his role in this place has been borne out today with all of the comments from people and all of the eulogies. And I would just like to express my deep sympathies to Senator Stirl, to his comrades in the Transport and General, uh, the, the Transport Workers Union, and also to his wife, Paola, children Caroline, Ian, Terry and Frank, to his grandchildren and his broader family. I am so deeply sorry for the loss of your loved one. May he rest in peace. Senator McCarthy. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I just rise to speak to the family of uh, Alex Gallagher, to Paola. Um, on behalf of the people of the Northern Territory, uh, we have incredibly fond memories of his time with us in the Northern Territory, in particular the Transport Workers' Union, who I know are listening here today to all of us. Uh, it was an important time when I came into the Senate in 2016 and met Alex for the first time, uh, along with many other uh, senators here uh, today. But I wanted to share with you, Paolo, to you and your children and grandchildren, uh, some pretty personal moments, uh, in particular uh, with my role here in the Senate, and I've heard uh, my colleagues speak of uh, so many things of Alex, but one of the things that stays with me is his mentoring. And one of the uh, earlier experiences I had, not really a year into the Senate, was travelling to the United Kingdom and working with Alex on uh, one of our committees to inquire into modern slavery. And it was my first time to the United Kingdom and I was, uh, I was a little bit nervous about going over to where Captain Cook came from. I wasn't quite sure what to think. And um, I don't think I could have travelled with a better, better colleague. Uh, we were able to talk, uh, not all the way on that flight over, but certainly uh, uh, in our time in London and debate many things about the history of Australia and the history of uh, colonisation. Uh, looking at landmarks around London, but also uh, working closely with him on the important role of uh, reducing and getting rid of uh, modern day slavery, not just in the UK or around the world, but here in Australia. So that was my first and very important uh, time with, with Alex, which obviously followed on with many other inquiries from there. But what I wanted to share in this moment was the memories of uh, Anzac Day in London and how that trip to London wasn't just about the modern slavery inquiry. I was able to talk with him about the many uh, Aboriginal men and women or the black diggers who fought for our country and were never recognised. And these were really um, important moments for me because with Alex's guidance, I was able to go and have a look at two cemeteries, uh, one in Bournemouth and one in Southampton, to look at, um, in particular Bournemouth, where one of the private diggers was buried and was never really recognised. And we wanted to make sure he was recognised in the Anzac Day uh, commemorations, in particular there in London. And that was Private William Joseph Punch. He was enlisted to go to war in 1916 and did go to war and died in 1917. And he was buried in the civilian area of the Bournemouth Cemetery and it took a while to find his grave. The other private was Private Benjamin Combo, who enlisted in 1915 uh, to go over and fight for Australia, uh, but unfortunately died on the journey and he was uh, buried at sea. But he was on the honour roll uh, in Southampton 
in Hollybrook uh, Cemetery. Again, I don't know if I would have had um, a, the, uh, the courage to go and do that and have a look, but also to be able to write about that and to commemorate that on the Anzac Day that we had in London. That was my first opportunity to get to know Alex really well. And I had, uh, excuse me, many times with him and with Sterlo uh, on the Regional and Rural Affairs Transport Committee. And I thought we were a great team. Uh, we worked together strongly for the last five years. And just want to really share with you that uh, with all the things that he did for our country, you know, with working with the TWU, with the Australian Labor Party, uh, here in the Senate, uh, on behalf of all Australians, irrespective of whether people agreed or disagreed with him, uh, he was an outstanding person. Uh, a generous, humble, fierce, fiercely strong, but someone that I greatly admired and, uh, and I'm deeply saddened by his loss. My sincere condolences to you, Paula, to the family, to the children and grandchildren, to your extended family and friends. On behalf of all my families in the Northern Territory, say Bawadji Bada, may you rest in peace. Senator, uh, Senator Canavan, Senator Roberts has just indicated on, that he wants to make a contribution remotely and then I'll come to you. Senator Roberts, you have the call. Thank you, Mr. President. Despite knowing of Senator Gallagher's illness and despite having discussed the progress of his treatment with him, I, like many, was shocked and saddened on hearing the sudden news of his passing. It's rare in Queensland that a senator from outside the state is known, let alone highly regarded. And Senator Gallagher, Gallagher and uh, Senator Stuhl are two such people. Yet concurrently, as well as the sadness, and I think the sadness was due to the, the uh, loss that we all felt, I'm also most appreciative for having met him and for having worked with him. He showed qualities that are rare in Parliament, a genuine love of and support for workers and for everyday Australians. A harking back for solid policies based upon data and facts, anchored in the real world, and that's something that always struck me about Alex, he's anchored in the real world. A realism and a sense for getting to the core of an issue and nothing getting in the way of him getting there. A wry sense of humour that broke out suddenly with gems that punctuated whole issues. And I appreciated his willingness to listen to my views, my positions. Indeed, his quiet yet strong support for issues deeply important to me. In that, I enjoyed his frankness and his openness. He loved our country, and like so many everyday Australians across our country, searched and hankered for a return to the basics. A traditional old school union leader, a real union delegate, the type for whom I have enormous regard, having dealt with them and worked with them in the mining industry, for their competence, their ability to listen to people, to really listen with genuine interest and genuine care, and to take real action in support. He was quietly assertive, the most effective type of assertiveness, a genuine, deep, grounded care for people and with common sense that showed his strength. Alex's party, our parliament and our nation have lost a caring, thoughtful, strong, practical contributor for whom I have enormous fondness and admiration. My condolences to Alex's family, to his mates and particularly to Glenn, and to our whole nation. Thank you, Mr President. Senator Canavan. Uh, thank you, um, Mr President. I would just like to briefly associate myself with uh, the sentiments of this chamber and the remarks that have been given uh, in, in tribute to uh, Senator Alex Gallagher. Uh, he, uh, he was... Uh, the type of person that does make this the, the best club in the country. Uh, uh, despite being on the other side of the chamber here, I know was always someone that would, uh, would, would, would engage with everybody in this place, uh, uh, would deal with everybody as an individual, show them respect and, and listen to them, uh, but then go away and, and, and fight for uh, 
the things that he held true uh, as, a, as a union leader, uh, as a member of the Australian Labor Party and as a senator for South Australia. I hope, I hope that um, Senator Gallagher's passing uh, doesn't let us lose something from this place too. It's, 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 sometimes I, I think that the senators like him aren't made anymore, but hopefully that's not the case. Uh, 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 he, he, he represented uh, st something that is, that is great about our nation, uh, uh, a down-to-earth uh, spirit, uh, a, a love of uh, egalitarian and fair go culture that we're about, uh, uh, and, and a real defence of uh, honest, hard-working men and women uh, of, of this country. Uh, I didn't get time to work with Alex on, a, on, on many issues. Uh, I just note that uh, today we're, 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 we're paying tribute to Senator Gallagher on the same day that uh, the next step has been taken on the radioactive waste uh, journey. I, uh, that was one issue I dealt with Alex a little bit on and I really respected his, his uh, no-nonsense attitude to issues like that uh, where he saw that there was the interest and the advancement of this country to support uh, he will be a great loss, or he is a great loss, uh, to this chamber, but uh, his, his legacy and memory uh, should inspire all of us to ensure uh, uh, we do not lose his spirit uh, from this chamber. Senator Urquhart. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I seek leave to in have incorporated into Hansa the speeches from Senators Carr, Senator Carol Brown and Senator... Um, Katrina Billick. There being no objection, leave is granted. Uh, I wish to also add just a few short remarks uh, to this condolence motion. Uh, Senator Gallagher's journey and I, as, as Senator Stirl said, um, paralleled each other for a little while. Um, we served on a number of committees together, the, the Murray-Darling Committee, uh, 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 but most particularly the Economics Committee. Uh, where he was my deputy chair on the legislation committee and I was his deputy chair on the references committee. Uh, and I, I will... I didn't know Senator Gallagher well. We, we had met on the rural and regional committee, but uh, we probably spent a lot of time together on the economics committee in that first six months, uh, uh, the, the, the second half of 2019. And uh, we were down in Taralgon uh, in Victoria and... We'd had the long drive out and a day's hearings where we heard of the many serious problems faced by that region. Uh, and the committee hearing ended and Alex disappeared. And I thought, oh, it's a long drive home. You know, he and Matthew have got to get back to Melbourne and then back to Adelaide. So I thought, yeah, he's, he's jumped in the car and gone. I chatted to a couple of the witnesses and then I went, the, uh, the hearing was held in the RSL. And I went upstairs, out of the uh, hearing room, and there was Alex, sitting at the bar. He'd already won one bet, and he had another one on. And that will be an enduring memory I have of a wonderful senator, a wonderful contributor to this place, and my sincere, con sincere condolences to his family, his friends, his colleagues, and his staff. I will now ask you all to rise to join me in a moment's silence to acknowledge the passing of Senator Alex Gallagher, remembering the contribution which he made to the Senate and to signify assent to the motion. Minister. Mr President, Mr President, I move that as a mark of respect to the memory of the late Senator Alex McGeckian Gallagher, uh, the Senate do now adjourn. The question is that the Senate do now adjourn. Those of that opinion say aye. Aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The Senate stands adjourned until midday tomorrow. <laughs>